uh, good evening, uh, everybody. Uh, can I welcome you all to the first virtual traffic and road safety advisory panel meeting? I don't think it will be the last one, but you're very welcome to the first one. Uh, present tonight are members and advisors of the panel and council officers. Also present are invited members of the public who will be uh, addressing the meeting. Additional councillors are also present as well. Uh, can I refer members and officers to the published protocols for holding virtual meetings? And uh, could you please note the following? Members of the panel should ensure they have the, the videos on at all times, uh, but to put microphones on mute uh, until they are invited to speak. Uh, other members, advisors and, and officers should switch off their videos and put microphones on mute until they are invited to speak. Uh, in case of a technical problem, the meeting will adjourn until the issue is resolved. If the te technical problem persists and the meeting is in call, a uh, uh, call is three members, the meeting will be abandoned and rearranged for a later date. The meeting is being audio and vid video recorded and will be available to watch uh, or listen to on the website. Would members of the panel, including advisors, uh, please raise their hand from the function bar, wherever that is, uh, to uh, indicate that they wish to speak. Please switch off your mobile phones and put them or put them on a silent mode. All right. On behalf of the panel, I would like to welcome Councillor Anjana Patel uh, uh, to the panel. And I would like to thank Councillor Christopher Baxter, a former member, for his contribution to the work of the panel. Right, OK, uh, can we now turn to the uh, agenda itself? Uh, are there I don't think there are any attendance by reserved members at all. Uh, the second item is declarations of interest. Declarations of interest have been published and are taken as read. Uh, are there any other declarations of interest that need to be made at uh, the meeting at all? Yes, Chairman. Yes, Marie. Governor of Park High School, I'm sorry I didn't declare it earlier. It just okay. occurred to me. Thank right. you. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, if I could just add, I think by the time I got legal advice, I missed the deadline. Um, I have a non pecuniary interest as I'm a resident of Vaughan Road. Uh, yeah. I don't think it'll become pecuniary if it does. Obviously, I'll leave the room. Thank you. Right, great. Thank you. Right. Uh, OK. Are there anybody else? No, right, okay. right, Sorry, uh, Jerry, it's Versha. Um, I'm uh, just an observer, but uh, non pecuniary for the Marlborough um, items if, if that's yeah. needed. Okay. Right. okay, thank you. Anybody else? Right, okay. Right, uh, item three appointment of vice chair on non voting advisors. Um, can the panel agree uh, to defer the appointments of vice chair and non voting advisors and, uh, uh, and, and, and suspend the re uh, relevant procedure uh, to allow the advisors to participate in the meeting. Is that okay with that, everybody? So we'll just uh, uh, appoint vice chair and advisors at our next meeting. Okay, right, thank you. All right. Um, right, item for deputations. Uh, could the panel note that five deputations? I'll start again. Could it? Can the panel note that five deputations have been received? I have agreed to hear all five uh, deputations. Following each deputation, which can last up to 10 minutes, members of the panel will be permitted to ask questions for, uh, for a 
maximum of 10 minutes. Uh, is the panel also in agreement that councillors uh, Ashton, Benjamin, Rabadia, Sachin Shah, Brown and Greek are allowed to speak for up to three minutes after all the deputations have been heard. Um, I, I think also Paul, uh, Paul Osborne, is there any, any other backbench councillors at all? I don't know. I hope not. <laughs> right. right. Uh, okay. Right. Uh, please note that all speakers will be timed, and if they go over their allotted time, I will be asking their mic microphones to be turned off. We have a number of matters to discuss, and I would ask all speakers and questioners to keep their speeches and questions brief to uh, allow us uh, to get through the business in a, a reasonable time. Right, OK, so I think we now go to the uh, dip deputations. Um, I have starting with uh, there's two deputations from one from Mr Goldblatt and one from Mr Brandt, um, who will be covering both uh, Green Lane and Dennis Lane. Uh, can I suggest, uh, as they may, there may be a slight overlap, that they uh, give their presentations uh, uh, without any questions until they finish? So in, in other words, Mr Goldblatt will speak for up to 10 minutes, then Mr Grant will speak for up to 10 minutes uh, and then at that point there'll be questions uh, from uh, members of, 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 of the of the panel. OK, so Mr Goldblatt, are you here? Um, yeah, it's actually uh, Graham Corder speaking on behalf of the deputation, but the others are here as well. All right, sorry. OK, no I mean, you, you have uh, up to 10 minutes. Uh, well, you and your colleagues can speak up to 10 minutes. You don't have to take up to 10 minutes if you don't want to. Uh, and then uh, and then Mr Grant will come in uh, and then we will have uh, uh, questions to you. So right, off, 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 off you go. Sure, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, for hearing our citizens' deputation this evening concerning the proposed low traffic neighbourhoods for Green Lane and Dennis Lane. We are representing residents of the Green Lane and Dennis Lane areas and are speaking on behalf of thousands of Harrow residents and stakeholders who are seriously concerned about the effect of these proposed road closures in Stanmore for two main reasons. One, it is unclear if the health and safety and equalities impacts have properly been thought through. Two, the demography and topography of this area means that a low traffic neighbourhood will be counterproductive here. The Council state that road closures are divisive. In fact, these proposals have united all ages and sections of our community because of the negative impacts they will have. 94% of feedback to the Commonplace website on the Green Lane and Dennis Lane proposals is against it. In addition, a petition has already reached over 2,000 signatures and will therefore trigger a full council debate on this matter in due course. Many of us already walk and cycle, and our issue with the proposed closures of Green Lane and Dennis Lane is that there is no identifiable problem that requires this low traffic neighbourhood solution. Health and safety and equality issues. The Council's own report to this panel acknowledges that there were only one to two weeks in which to prepare these proposals. That report covers those issues inadequately and confirms... Hello, no Chris, I'm Barry Phillips. Unfortunately, Phillips. I'm not here right now. I'm if you safe. leave your name and the number, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. The Harrow Transport Lip notes the Broadway, Uxbridge Road and Church Road as a strategic east-west route to the M1, A1, A41 and M25, which are not roads for cycling or walking. It further identifies the Broadway having emissions exceeding the EU annual mean limit for NO2 and also for having high human exposure. Closing Green Lane and Dennis Lane would funnel more traffic through the Broadway, exacerbating this pollution problem. The Green Lane Uxbridge Road Junction is already over capacity with a dangerous right turn. It is made worse by many driving on the wrong side of Uxbridge Road to get into Old Church Lane. Diverting additional traffic onto this junction will cause more accidents and additional risks to the very cyclists and pedestrians this proposal seeks to help. 
Access for large vehicles, including delivery lorries, refuse trucks and emergency vehicles will become difficult. There is nowhere for these vehicles to turn should these roads be closed, which will cause safety issues for passing cyclists and pedestrians whilst they manoeuvre. The proposed road closures will risk gridlock across key junctions on a major north, south, east, west route and will also have serious implications for the emergency services, in particular response times for the ambulance service and fire brigade, both of which are already under pressure. The Harrow Transport Bus is the council's own service to carry children with high needs, as used by the daughter of one of our deputies here tonight. These children can suffer from claustrophobia if trapped in standing traffic. They cannot sit still on a bus for prolonged periods. The proposals will significantly increase their time on the bus, worsening their experience and health, placing a greater strain on the borough's staff who look after them. A number of religious and other institutions will be negatively impacted by the proposed road closures. These are St John's Church of England Primary School, a faith-based school. It has a wide catchment and children travel long distances from across the borough. The mosque and temple in Wood Lane have large and active communities drawn from the northwest London area and beyond that and rely on access via Green Lane and Dennis Lane. The temple has written a letter to the council setting out their concerns in which they state this will very much inconvenience community members who attend our temple and the mosque next door and we cannot begin to imagine the chaos it will bring during our festive seasons. The orthopaedic hospital's own transport service will be negatively impacted as it, as it uses Dennis Lane as its preferred route for hospital staff and patients to get to it from Stanmore Tube Station. Demography and topography of the area. TfL's definition of an area suitable for a low traffic neighbourhood fails when applied to Green Lane and Dennis Lane. In addition, the implementation plan does not list Stanmore as an area with high potential for switching from using cars. This is because the geography, average journey distances and demographics are too great a barrier to encourage journeys to be undertaken by bike or on foot. Green Lane and Dennis Lane are both incredibly long and steep hills. Cycling up these hills is extremely challenging and many people, especially the elderly, find it difficult to walk up these roads. The proportion of older people in Stanmore is a third higher than the national average, which means many residents rely on their cars for access to amenities. Both of these roads are already very safe for walkers and cyclists who do use them. They benefit from traffic calming measures, including speed bumps, width restrictions and green lane being a 20 mile an hour zone. TfL's strategic neighbourhood analysis lists the areas in the safest category across the whole of London. There are also plenty of open green spaces such as Stanmore Country Park and Bentley Priory in close proximity to these roads. This is where people walk for exercise rather than on the street. The proposed closures would also impact the local conservation areas. We can only conclude the council chose not to do a formal consultation into proposed road closures since they were concerned they may not get a positive response. Most residents have only found out about these proposals by chance. The Department for Transport statutory guidance says authorities should seek input from stakeholders during the design phase. Residents are stakeholders. We should have been formally consulted. The Council's own report from 2006 that led to the traffic calming measures on Green Lane clearly states that a full road closure would require a turning area at the top of Green Lane, that it would impact emergency response times, cause inconvenience to residents, overload junctions on the Uxbridge Road and would be unacceptable. And Dennis Lane is subject to similar considerations. What has changed between then and now? If the council is looking for problems to solve to encourage Stanmore residents to be more active, we would suggest fixing the broken play equipment in our local park and the broken zebra crossing on Stanmore Hill as a start. All of the data available from Harrow and TfL shows that the proposals, which are deeply unpopular, will actually cause problems for numerous people with protected characteristics whilst producing limited material benefit. We thank you for your time this evening and would be grateful if the Council would take on board the views represented here and agree not to proceed with the proposed LTNs for Green Lane and Dennis Lane. Thank you. Sorry, Councillor Miles, your microphone's muted. This is an opportunity for members to ask a question. Thank you. Yeah, sorry about that. No, it's not because we're having Mr. Plant, aren't we? Yes. Right. Can we have Mr. Grant? Hello. I should, I should be up now. Yes. Uh, my name is Ron Grant. I live in and represent the residents of Stanmore Hall which for those who may not know is in Wood Lane, close to the junction with Stanmore Hill. We comprise, we comprise 23 flats, 
35 people reside here and 32 have signed the request for this deputation. I've also been asked to represent the interests of the Little Common Residents Association, which I'm happy to do. The association has written directly to your self-chair and to Councillor Henson, leader of the council. We oppose, we all oppose the closure of Dennis Lane. Secondly, I would like to compliment the officers on a comprehensive and clear report. However, we are sorry not to see current traffic flow reports together with anticipated flows after the closure. How can considered decisions be made without them? Also, although chart six clearly shows worse for the community and restricts access, as the leading views of those answering the questionnaire, it would have been helpful to have seen individual site by site responses. Stammer Hall and Little Common residents are surprised not to have been circulated individually by the council about these proposals, which we found out about, oh, totally by accident. We do support the aims of the report in encouraging cycling and walking, particularly for short journeys. There are currently three roads which serve Wood Lane, running south to north, Brockley Hill, Dennis Lane and Stanmore Hill. Paragraph 2.29 of the reports states that these proposals were developed by identifying neighbourhoods with established problems with vehicular traffic, cutting through estates and causing environmental and road safety problems. I would like to take issue here with the report because any past traffic problems have been effectively eliminated by the installation of a width restriction and by three chicanes along Dennis Lane. People do currently walk along Dennis Lane, mainly as the most convenient and shortest route from Wood Lane area to Stanmore Station. The pavements are wide enough to avoid too close a distance between walkers. People do not use Dennis Lane for recreational walks and never will. Why should they want, uh, which, why should they, when much more picturesque walks are available, with an access 200 yards further along Wood Lane to the Stanmore Country Park or another 200 yards to Pear Wood? or through Stanmore Common. And for a spectacular walk, how about further up Stanmore Hill to the Bentley Prior Nature Reserve? I don't wish to upset our neighbours in Dennis Lane, but a walk up and down their street is not a patch on the other four options. Cyclists do use Dennis Lane now and will continue to do so, closure or no closure. So the closure of Dennis Lane is unlikely to attract more walkers or more cyclists. But what is likely to be the impact if the closure goes ahead? Residents beyond the width restriction in Dennis Lane will encounter delays in emergency vehicles reaching them and will be unable to receive deliveries, particularly from supermarkets, due to the position of the current width restriction. Now, what happens to those drivers who currently use Dennis Lane in a northerly direction? Those coming from Marsh Lane will probably turn left onto an already congested Stanmore Broadway, joining those wishing to turn up Stanmore Hill at the lights. Those coming from London Road will join the ballet at the Dennis Lane lights. Heaven knows how many extra miles would be, will be done by these vehicles. Not very environmentally friendly, is it? So far, we've managed to exhaust to cause traffic jams at traffic lights and pump unnecessary fumes to be breathed in by the toddlers at the Cottrell Nursery and the Stanmore shoppers. Now, what happens to the current users of Dennis Lane who want to drive in a southerly direction? Unable to drive down Dennis Lane, the traffic will go mainly one of two directions. East along Wood Lane to the junction with Brockley Hill. At rush hour, there is already a build-up of traffic wishing to turn into Brockley Hill. So the build-up will get worse with idle traffic pumping fumes into the ground to the RNOH and the Aspire Leisure Centre, which is used for patients' rehabilitation. Or west along Wood Lane until this junction with Stanmore Hill. Again, during rush hours, there is a build-up of traffic often blocking our exit gates. At this stage, I would remind you that Wood Lane is a country lane, not built as a through road, but here you are wishing to pump more traffic into it. The relatively recent housing developments of the Grove were given planning permission based on the ease of traffic dispersal, which included Dennis Lane. Without that option, the traffic will now be shunted along Wood Lane to either Rockley Hill or Stanmore Hill. Users of the Hindu temple currently having have three options available to them when leaving. That option will reduce to two. Users of the Muslim centre park their cars mainly in the rugby club car park 
Again, their options with dispersal were reduced by a third. Planning permission for conversion of both of these sites was given on the assumption of some traffic flow down Dennis Lane. Both sites are operated responsibly and relationship with their neighbours are currently convivial. Will they remain convivial when through no fault of their own, the users of those city centres exacerbate traffic jams? Should recovering passenger, patients at one of the country's leading orthopaedic hospitals suffer increased traffic fumes? During rush hour with the kids at school, here at Stammer Hall, we often have to wait for traffic outside our exit gate to dissipate in order for us to drive out. With the traffic forced to exit Wood Lane at the Stanmore Hill end, there's a very good chance that our entry gate here at Stanmore Hall will be blocked in. Vehicles, unfortunately, sometimes including ambulances, wishing to turn right from Wood Lane into Stanmore Hill Hall may find their paths blocked. As they wait for traffic to clear, they will undoubtedly hold up cars behind them, wishing to drive further along Wood Lane. That's causing major traffic jams, possibly stretching into Stanmore Hill. Stanmore Hall and Little Common are both parts of conservation areas. On page 20 of Harrow's conservation policy document, you will see that one of the key issues in this area is traffic along Wood Lane. So the proposal for closure of Dennis Lane, which will undoubtedly increase traffic flow through our conservation areas, is clearly contrary to your own policy. So if you voluntarily break one of your own rules, will you be able to, be able to uphold the others? One of our residents, 88 years young Stuart, put us around in the greenhouse, which is against the wall flanking the road. Do you want him to be subject to increased car fumes? One of our more senior citizens, aged 93, for anonymity, we'll call her Jane, still drives, but sadly can't walk very well, has emailed me with the following message. They are crazy changing a system that works well. Go for it. And if you need my help, let me know. The proposals in front of you will cause increased traffic jams, are environmentally unfriendly and break your own rules for conservation areas. For the sake of the residents in Stanmore Hall and Little Common, the users of the Muslim Centre, the users of the Hindu Temple, the patients at RNOH, the residents of the road, but particularly for Stuart and Jane, please remove Dennis Lane from your list of closures. I'm happy to take any questions from the panel. Thank you. Right. Thanks very much, uh, Mr Grant. Do panel members have any questions to either of the speakers? I, I think it might be Russell. Yay. Damn it. Oh, yeah. I, I was just going to su suggest it might be better if we um, take questions from Councillor Ashton and Councillor Benjamin first, and then we can address them with the panel. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I yes. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, right. So, Philip or um, Marilyn, have you got any questions to the two speakers? Ch Chairman, are you asking the members to use their three minute talk at this point? Because no. So, no, so it should be panel it's, members who are asking pan questions. Panel members only. It's panel mem members oh. only. Oh, then, then if I can jump in, Chair, thank you. Um, I'd like to um, uh, thank uh, Ron and um, Graham for taking the time um, to speak today. I think they were very articulate and both of them hit the nail on the head that the aim of the schemes um, don't quite work. The aim, if we look through the agenda, the aim of the scheme was to enable social distancing, which these schemes don't do anything to promote. The, the other aim is to uh, encourage unnecessary use of public transport, but I think both Ron and Graham have articulated that it will actually increase traffic in the areas um, and um, increase pollution and also it will prioritise walking and cycling and they both uh, mentioned that it's not the easiest uh, cycling route. So my question um, to both would be, uh, are they in agreement that the these schemes do not do anything to um, uh, sort of uphold the aim of the scheme, which is to prioritise walking and to prevent uh, public um, transport. Sorry, to encourage public transport. Yes, I totally agree with uh, Councillor Jogia. All right. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, what, what we, I think what we're saying is that we think they're counterproductive, so they'll actually do more harm than good for cyclists in the area. 
Right, OK. Right, OK, thank you for that. Are there any more questions from members of the panel? No. Right, right, OK. Well, thanks. For, uh, can I thank the uh, speakers on those two from those two uh, deputations? Um, can we now possibly move on to deputation number three? Uh, which is Mr. Mandel who wants to speak on Honeypot Lane. You see here. Ian. Yes. yes. Hello. Hi. You, you have up to 10 minutes and then there's up to 10 minutes of questions by members of the panel. Okay. It's all yours. Right. The um, parking barriers that have been put in on the service road have been done without any consideration to the shopkeepers. Um, it was done so called for social distancing, but the pavement there is already six foot plus wide. Um, the barriers add about another four or five foot to it. I believe the council have put up cameras there on one of the lampposts uh, last week to monitor traffic. And I've got cameras on my premises which show absolutely no footfall on the pavements for the shops. People cannot park. Um, I have a lot of customers that try and drop in and leave stuff with me. You can't park. The residents of the flats upstairs uh, who have parking permits leave their cars there all day so take up what um, spaces are available on the east side of the service road um, the service road is now being used for a very fast cut through when traffic coming up honeypot lane see the lights turn to red which means they would have to wait there quite a while uh, they cut into the service road, speed through and jump out into Broomfield or Wembra Road. There's already been two people knocked down there because they stepped out from between cars and the cars just they absolutely tear through there. Um, also, why has Stanmore not been included in the barrier scheme? Why? Have we at the top end of Honeypot Lane and the shops at the bottom end near Queensbury Roundabout had barriers put up? I know from other shopkeepers I know down there that we're all suffering. We get no um, passing trade. We get no chance to unload vans. Um, there's a shop on the parade uh, next door. They have big lorries turn up. Um, to unload doors. There's nowhere for them to park. There's a cycle lane there which you, someone's put in and it's all coned off. Um, this scheme has been done without any consideration for the users and the shops in the vicinity. The only reason I can think it's been done is for some monetary advantage because the whole thing does not make sense. Two of the shops have now told me they're going to be closing because they cannot make any money whatsoever. They cannot make a profit. And what's the point in them being open? I have had less than 500 pounds in since March. I mean, that is, you can't keep a business running like that. I have staff on furlough. What am I going to do when the furlough finishes? I have to get rid of them. And I don't know how long the barriers are going to be there for. Um, it's just crazy. No thought has been given to this. The only thought has been get the barriers down quickly and fulfill some dubious commitment uh, to TFL. And as I said, why us and why not Stanwood? Why not Canada's Park? What's the difference? It's absolutely crippling the shops on that parade. And I've been along and spoken to all of them, even the restaurants. 
people can't park there at night to go to the restaurants. What do you do? Pass it over to you. Well, thanks very much, uh, Ian. Has any members of the panel got any questions? Uh, Amit. So just a quick one. Um, I'd like to um, uh, thank Ian for the deputation. I'm very sorry to hear the um, huge blow on your business. Um, the rationale from TfL for such a scheme was that it would encourage more people to walk to um, their local shop. In your opinion, has there been ev any evidence that more people have been walking to come mm -hmm. to um, the parade of shops? None whatsoever. In fact, it's even less because we used to get people parking in the road who used to um, walk to the health centre, which is four shops down from me. And on the way out, they used to do a bit of shopping, whatever they needed. That's not happening. There is less footfall now than there was before. Thank you. I think that's very interesting uh, for us and the panel to note when we discuss I'm sorry, I could, I've got um, CCTV cameras and if anyone wanted to come and look at them, you could see footfall uh, is just non-existent. Right, thank you. Are there any other questions at all? John. John. I'm going to put your mic on, John. Yep, thank you very much. And thank you very much for coming along, sir, and making the point. I too am very sorry on the very negative effect um, on your business. And I just wanted to take up the point you made. I mean, there, this has been done in a rush with no consultation. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. So what would, in your view, since you do live there and most of the officers uh, just probably drive through, what, in your view, is the best thing to do with this scheme? Drop it completely because it worked well. Um, people had to pay for the people without permits had to pay for parking on the west side of the um, of the cut through and people could park there buy a ticket do their shopping or go to the clinic then come back and move on allowing spaces to be free but now you cannot park there and the other side of the road which is nearest to honeypot lane is solid cars all day long you can't no one can drive up and park Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Are there any other questions at all? No. All right. OK, well, thanks very much, uh, Mr. Mandel, for your. Uh, I've got one. Dep Sorry, I've Dep got one. Dep 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 Council of Days has got one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you very much, Ian, for um, your feedback on the scheme. Um, yeah, I'm very sorry to hear what's happened with the local shopkeepers in that area and I will have some words to say later on in regards to that. But I just wanted to know just from your point of view, is there anything that could be done um, immediately to improve the experience for um, um, potential shopkeepers in the area um, uh, beyond uh, getting rid of those restrictions? No, that's that's it. Once those barriers have gone and the traffic wardens can come back and police it, so that cars don't overstay their um, their time. No, it's mainly that they've cut down by half the parking availability in that slip road. Um, unless you take the barriers away, there's nothing you can do. There's a chemist there which had a disabled bay outside. That's been blocked off. You know, you can't park there. If a disabled person wanted to go to the chemist, they can't stop. You know, it, it's just you cannot even stop and drop off stuff quickly. Um, yes, I give way. Well, John, you have a second question. You want to put your mic on, John? John, we can't hear you. Sorry, I do beg your pardon. Jerry, uh, that's a very interesting point that the gentleman makes that the disabled bay 
outside the chemist shop has been blocked off. I specifically sent you an email the other day and you said no, no disabled no, vein. I sent you a, a further reply from the officers. <laughs> oh, right. Might, so how, many, maybe. How, many, how many disabled bays have been blocked off in Harrow? My, well, I've got a reply. Is Barry Phillips there? Barry, are you there? Barry. Um, Barry. Yes. Yeah, I'm Hello. Hello. Can Barry. you hear me? Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah, just about. Yeah. Um, there was certain, an inquiry, uh, inquiry from Councillor Hinckley about disabled bays, and I yeah. think you sent an email about Honeypot Lane, didn't you? Yeah, there was, there was one bay suspended in Honeypot Lane. But the parking was stopped at the end, so people could park at either end. Right. Good. Thank you very much, yes, Barry. OK, are there any further questions for Ian? Mm -hmm. no. Right, great. OK, thanks very much for the uh, presentation, right. Ian. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right, we're on to uh, deputation number four, Mr O'Connor. Who's come and talk to us about LTN02, which is in a view. Uh, oh, here, Edward. Is that, yes. Hello. Yeah, you, Hello. You, you've got uh, up, up to 10 minutes, and there'll be questions from the panel for up to 10 minutes. It's all yours. Thank you. OK, I, I hope you can uh, all hear me OK. Yes. So th thank you for the opportunity to present this deputation to Harrow Council. I object to the proposals for low traffic neighbourhood LTN02 scheme, which is Pinnerview area and Headstone South. I live on Shandos Road in the middle of LTN02, where there are plans to implement a scheme which will place physical vehicular blockades or planters on Pinnerview, thus leaving residents stranded on one side of the road or the other and having to drive in various directions to get to the nearest main road and onwards. When I first heard that there were proposals to improve the local environment uh, and to encourage walking, etc., I looked forward to seeing the proposals. To learn that the proposals amount to planters blocking residents' main access road was disappointing, and there was uh, frustration in the neighbourhood at what is seen as a wasted opportunity. Normally, one would expect that when a public scheme is tabled, that a number of options would be discussed and assessed in terms of impact on the environment impact on crime, impact on other forms of transport, impact, impact on the public realm, uh, health and safety, impact on residents, etc. From the responses I've received from Harrow Council, either none of these impacts were known or else they're not being disclosed. For any scheme to get the green light, the benefits must be clear. Otherwise, the default option is to do nothing. Going ahead with a scheme which has no uh, no benefits as far as we can see is playing with the residents' lives and is reckless. If the proposer cannot articulate the benefits and back up the proposals with evidence or data, then it must be questioned whether the benefits exist at all or if they do, if they're achievable. Residents that manage to hear about the proposals have been given no data, no reports, no impact assessments or modelling that suggest the scheme will benefit residents. Residents will be worse off after the scheme is implemented in terms of traffic, air pollution and additional travel time. Residents are being penalised for the driving habits and behaviours of non-residents. No alternative option, options have been, been presented to residents, for example, aut automatic number plate recognition, ANPR. And the so-called problem has been overstated. The council, we believe, has been disingenuous about this and, and about this being a reaction to COVID. If there ever was a real problem, there is no data to support it. The additional traffic on Pinner view from traffic cutting through from Parkside to Pinner Road during rush hour is negligible. It is not a rat run that needs to be fixed. There is no logic in, imp in imposing a poor scheme which will adversely affect residents 24 hours a day because of a negligible increase in traffic for a short time during the day. Remember, the scheme not only blocks Pinner view to non-residents, it's, it's blocking it to, to residents. 14 roads lead on to Pinner view, excluding tributary roads and you are sending every one of those residents uh, of those roads in another direction. It is ridiculous and will, will result in gridlock elsewhere in the area. 
Pinview is a road. It's meant for traffic and is currently doing what it what it was built for. Why you would look to block it in its entirety is, is a mystery. What options were discounted in order to arrive at the solution to place planters blocking pin review? Surely the technology exists that will not adversely affect residents whilst keeping non-residents to the main roads, as other areas in London have managed to do successfully. The technology absolutely exists to fix this alleged problem without adversely affecting residents. We live in an age of autonomous cars and intelligent traffic management. If the best that the council can propose is blocking the roads with big flower pots, then questions have to be asked. I note that Hounslow Council has made ANPR work in South Chiswick, but Harrow, Harrow has gone the planter route. Why can't Harrow make this work? Residents can continue to use pin review and res using ANPR, residents can continue to use pin review and visitors will have to use the side road, which is what they would have to do under LTN 02 proposals anyway. In this way, you are only penalising non-residents and allowing residents to carry on as before. There is a win-win solution out there, if only the scheme was planned correctly. Any solution is not the best solution. What Harrow should be concerned about is the additional traffic coming from the new developments Harrow View West and Eastman Village. It is insanity and a disaster waiting to happen to force us into Harrow View, given the current traffic flows on that road and the predicted uh, traffic flows. What traffic modelling has been done on this or are residents expected to take a leap of faith and wait for the inevitable accident on Harrow View? If you try to design a worse solution, you couldn't have done it any worse than the current proposals. One of the reasons we decided to make, um, one of the reasons my family decided to make our home in Harrow was accessibility. We can drive to tube stations, supermarkets, churches, schools and get to work relatively easily. To lose access to two of our three tube stations, easy access, and to make all of the other, rest other destinations longer and further for no discernible benefit and for no apparent reason is unacceptable. Many of my neighbours have expressed a similar view where losing access via pin view will have a negative impact on their lives and there is frustration that no other options have been discussed. The proposed blockade of pin review is unnecessary. There are no benefits for the scheme other than the alleged reduction in air pollution and walking, but these are only aspirational. Nothing has been quantified and the scheme has no success criteria. I've asked Harrow for this information twice and both times nothing has come back other than these schemes are now being implemented for COVID crisis reasons. So which is it? I don't believe these schemes have anything to do with coronavirus mitigation as the council now claims, as the plans for LTN 02 were in place long before the virus outbreak. Harrow told me in July this year that the proposals are to assist with coronavirus crisis, as I said. This is demonstrably untrue. Harrow wanted to implement these schemes long before coronavirus. If the proposals were allegedly being consulted on before the crisis, they couldn't have been part of a response to a crisis that didn't exist six months ago. If the and I was told the, the council's priority is to address the health crisis. If it didn't exist when you started trying to implement this, what were the original reasons for implementing this scheme pre-COVID? A company called Sustrans allegedly held consultation and workshops with stakeholders some months before the virus outbreak. If the proposals were being consulted on before the virus outbreak, how can Harrow now say that these proposals are part of a response to the coronavirus health crisis? It isn't and it wasn't. Um, if it is now to do with the coronavirus, what were Sustrans discussing back in January 2020? I believe the council has received or is about to receive funding for which it, uh, which it wants to spend on these schemes. I can't comment on other LTNs, but on LTN 02, it hasn't been planned properly. As I said, there are no reports available, no assessment of traffic modelling, environmental or crime MPEX. Uh, the, the only explanation we, we've received is that um, it's worked elsewhere. Uh, uh, I don't live elsewhere. My family and I live in Harrow. It's not clear what it is that's worked elsewhere, but despite zero evidence of any planning having taken place, Harrow Council appeared to be happy to proceed at haste. The implementation has now been accelerated without adequate consultation. I fear that because of the lack of planning and in an attempt to secure and spend funding as quickly as possible, a poor scheme is about to be implemented on the basis that somebody thinks it is a good idea. 
This will adversely impact the lives of hundreds of residents, many of whom are still unaware of the proposals or its impacts. I believe the planned implementation of LTN 02 should be stopped or at least postponed so that proper planning can take place and the data on which the decision should have been made can be made available and properly assessed and the benefits quantified before public money is wasted. It is unusual that Harrow Council are adamant that they will proceed with a proposal that will adversely affect hundreds of residents' lives without a shred of data existing upon which this decision has been based. The notion of doing something because you've been, been given money is wasteful and I'm sure was not the intention of the funding source. Implementing this scheme is the equivalent of firing shots blindly into a crowd just because you've been given free bullets. It's reckless and it's negligent. Blowing money on a half-baked scheme that is de detrimental to many residents' lives is worse than doing nothing. Can I just add, it, it is, um, I, I worked for a telecoms company and I can tell you for a fact that working patterns have now changed forever. The telecoms industry has reacted quickly to put in place fibre and 5G infrastructure to allow hundreds of thousands and millions of people to work from home. It is absolute conjecture for Harrow to say that we need to change road layouts because of potential risk of an increase in traffic due to coronavirus. That is an opinion bordering on misrepresentation. While we're talking about the involvement of Sustrans, uh, I had a look at Sustrans' website and their what they call their introductory guide to low traffic neighbourhood design. It talks about um, so, some of the areas that you need to address in any um, uh, any exercise. So you need to look at air quality, areas of high deprivation, poor access to green space, uh, schools, uh, transport accessibility and so on. Now, Harrow's own report, which is the Transport Local Implementation Plan, says Harrow contributes 2.1% of all the CO2 emitted across London. This puts the borough in 28th position out of the 33 London boroughs. Further, a report by Switchcraft in, in August 2019 confirmed that Harrow has the second lowest CO2 emissions of all the London boroughs. Harrow must be commended on having such uh, excellent air quality, but if you were trying to adversely disrupt our, live, our lives to improve us from being second best to best, i.e. one position, that is ridiculous. Have you completed modelling that measures air pollution and what levels you expect emissions to reduce to? I believe and my neighbours believe this scheme will increase pollution rather than helping the health and well-being of residents. By Sustrans' own design criteria. Sorry therefore, Chair, the 10 minutes are up, so could you just please quickly wind up? Thank you. OK, can, we, can I just say then by Sustrans' own design criteria, there is no justification. The environmental situation cannot be a priority. We can discount this being about COVID and we can discount this being about the environment. If anything, sitting at cars making longer journeys, journeys and queuing at traffic lights on Harrow View will make air pollution worse, not better. This scheme is impossible to justify, justify under any uh, criteria. I would like to, to <coughs> mention the fact that antisocial behaviour in Harrow has increased by 47% in the last year. This is, include, uh, this is according to plumplot.com. Robbery, uh, drug crime, all, all sorts are up in Harrow. If we're forcing people onto the streets, we, we need to address this. Uh, and presumably that's that's being carried out by Sostrans or, or another consultant. Um, I realise I'm going... Minister oh, O'Connor, you have on about 11 and a half minutes now. Oh, OK. I'll, I'll, I'll just close that I believe the only people that will benefit from LTN02 are people uh, who don't work or uh, who do work and live their lives within a mile of their homes. Anybody else, uh, I have four children, everybody else is, is going to be worse off. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it there and thank you for the opportunity okay. to present right. this deputation. Thanks, right. Are there any questions to Mr O'Connor? Amit. <clears throat> Uh, thank you, Mr. O'Connor, for um, uh, your contribution today. I think the panel is very familiar um, with the area, as we've spoken about it a number of times in relation to the Goodwill Junction changes proposed last year. I just have two questions. The first question is, um, Pillar View is the main archery for the whole uh, residential estate. Um, and I agree with you that it is uh, well structured with the speed bumps to serve these roads. If these changes were to go ahead, do you think the other roads, the surrounding roads, will be able to cope with the level of traffic that Pinner View is 
used to. And by by the roads, I mean um, all all the roads which lead off Bolton, Hyde, um, and so on. Do you think they could um, be able to cope with that level of pin of view traffic? Um, and my second question would be to the panel of um, the changes on good good for Goodwill Junction, which have been discussed a number of times. When and if do you think those those changes would tie into uh, uh, LT uh, MO2? But um, thank you very much. Uh, okay, so, so on the first on the first question, it, it depends what you mean by cope. You you could sit in traffic all day, uh, bur burning fuel and you know I I I emitting nitrous oxide. Um, that there will be an impact if if that's the question. Um, whether whether we'll cope. Of course, we'll cope. We have to get our children to school. We have to we we have to get to work. But it will. My, my my point was there will be an adverse impact, and there was there's got to be a win win solution rather than leaving people sitting in cars. I live on Shandos Road, for example. If I if I'm driving one of my children to the to any any station in Harrow, I now have to go out through Beresford Road and then Cunningham Park out towards Harrow View. If I if I turn left at the end of my road and there's a uh, what you call it a bin lorry in front of me, I'm going nowhere for 20 minutes, whatever. Whereas previously I could reverse, go up, go up, back up in review and down Cunningham Park or down Hyde or Longley or one of those. There, there will be an impact. Of course we'll cope, but it, my my point is there there will be an adverse impact on all of the local residents. Thank you. I mean, what I was trying to say was that. The, the the roads such as your sub Chandos and Beresford won't be able to cope. I think as as much as say the pin of view and harrow view that level of traffic. I don't think absolutely other roads are sort of made for that level of traffic. Correct, they're not. I mean, you can see Cunningham Park currently. It's it's absolutely chock a block all, all, already. Um, and those other those other roads you listed, they're, they're they're small roads. They're not made for that kind of traffic. Thank you. And um, I don't know if there's anyone. Um, Mr Chairman, from the panel to advise on the status of goodwill if, if the, uh, the proposed changes to the goodwill junction and how or if that might tie into this scheme. I don't know if any of the officers are present at all. But Barry or David. OK, uh, I can probably answer that. I mean, <laughs> sorry, yeah, uh, the goodwill tool junction Unfortunately, it was we were um, ready to do another consultation, follow up consultation, just as the coronavirus um, health crisis broke. Uh, and we haven't um, found uh, the opportunity to organise um, that consultation yet, but the intention is to offer two alternative solutions uh, for local people to consider, but, uh, you know, following a lot of uh, debate with local Board councillors. So it's still in our plans to do it. Um, I think it's really just a case of what's the best format for undertaking that consultation. I think that's the thing that needs to be clarified at this point, given that we're in this uh, virtual world. Thanks very uh, much. Uh, thank you, Chair. Right. Are, are there any other uh, questions to Mr. O'Connor? No? Yes. Oh. John. You're making a move Thank you very much. Given what David Eaglesham has said, that he hasn't um, been able to get the revised consultation together for the Goodwill uh, Junction, and what our eloquent speaker has said, is it not sensible to put all this in abeyance? Because unfortunately, this council is a wonderful organisation, but it does suffer from silo management. and the two th schemes are inextricably linked. So what mileage is there in deciding to put it in abeyance until the consultation on the Goodwill Junction has been discussed? Thank you. Mm. David, do you want to respond to that at all? OK, thank you, Chair. Um, I do understand that the schemes are very close to each other. Um, the, the extent to which one will impact on the other is, you know, is debatable. But what I would say is that the, in terms of the funding that have been provided to us by Transport for London, um, is really to provide, you know, temporary measures 
quickly um, before the end of September. So there isn't really much scope to delay and reconsider the project. Or, although I would add that, um, and I will sort of pick up on what the uh, deputy was saying about um, the previous work that was done on the scheme. Of course, the scheme was um, a response to, as the panel will know, a petition that was received with you know, hundreds and hundreds of signatures from people in the area requesting that type of scheme, um, which is actually the reason why it was uh, included in, uh, it, it sort of fitted with the objectives of the TfL programme, so that's why it was included. But the timescales don't really allow us to um, delay it and reconsider it, unfortunately. Thank you, Chair. Right, thanks. Is there any other questions at all? OK, thanks very much, uh, Mr O'Connor, for your uh, presentation. Uh, right, we've now got on to the final deputation, which is Mr Summers, who uh, wants to speak on SS01, which is Grimsdyke School. Uh, Mr Summers. Uh, thank you. Uh... Okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> right, OK, yeah. you have uh, up to 10 minutes, and there'll be up to 10 minutes of questions. It's all yours. OK. Uh, good evening and thank you, Chair, for accepting this uh, deputation. My name is, as you said, David Summers. I'm a resident of Hillview Road in Hatch End, and I represent over 75 residents in the Hillview community, all of whom feel strongly that the Grimsdyke School Street Scheme SS01 is badly conceived, and instead of achieving its aims, it will promote greater congestion and pollution, increase traffic flows, and lead to issues of road safety. This scheme, with all its caveats of being experimental, subject to amendment of limited or indefinite duration, is, is being imposed on residents, however laudable and well-intentioned it may be. Explanations that there was little time, despite being conceived in May, and the speed was of the essence, do not explain why until recently there had been no proactive publicity by Harrow Council and still no communication with residents either in Sylvia Avenue or the wider affected area. Just as incomprehensible is the fact that considering the scheme drawing is dated 19th and 25th of June, this scheme was not mentioned in the Grimsdyke Road parking review documentation which was being officially consulted at the same time of 12th of June to the 2nd of July. This disconnect is incomprehensible. It is highly probable that consultees would have given a significantly different response if they'd been aware of this scheme. Now, whilst the two projects are different and contrary to the implied position of the officers, these two schemes do and should interact. A holistic approach is required, which would evolve into an integrated scheme for a healthier and safer environment for walking, scooting and cycling and substantially resolve traffic problems in the area. As of now, residents are astonished, resentful, distrustful and angry that it is being imposed in this way. Pre and post COVID, the yellow school entrance markings at both Sylvia Avenue entrances to Grimsdyke School other yellow lining and the periodic presence of the mobile CCTV vehicle appear to discourage parents' vehicles from this stretch of road. Instead, they're using Shaftesbury Plainfields car park, other adjacent roads such as Hillview, Coburn, Linden, and across the main railway line at the avenue. What vehicle count measurements do officers have for Sylvia Avenue and for what date time period and by how much do officers think that this will reduce? Vehicles which do not have valid entry permits will either enter the zone and pay the penalty or wait until the end of the period. As there is no surplus space in Shaftesbury Playing Fields car park or on street in the feeder roads or adjoining roads, where will they wait? This will add to congestion and environmental noise and air pollution and potentially adverse impact, adversely impact on safety. The scheme as proposed will require children and parents going from and to and through the playing fields to cross the uncontrolled two-way traffic flow in Coburn Avenue, or that I call, or we call the dog leg, to access Sylvia Avenue, which will now be closed off. 
This area is already congested as there is insufficient access road width for two way vehicle flow into and out of the car park and insufficient pavement capacity to this car park for children and parents, some with buggies, scooters and bikes. The ability to widen this road is severely constrained by the presence of a substation. How can this be safer or healthier as there will now be increased maneuverings of vehicles which are not permit holders looking to find a set down place or park until entry is permitted. Regrettably, this scheme does not improve the environment or enhance safety for children and parents who already walk, cycle, scoot along Upper Hill View Road and into Coburn Avenue. These are the feeder roads to the playing fields car park, Sylvia Avenue and adjoining roads. Overall, except for those living in Sylvia Avenue, Residents and pedestrians in adjoining and feeder roads are likely to be adversely affected with increased air and noise pollution, reduced safety, inconvenience, arrogant driving behaviour and potential damage. In the absence of information about this scheme, either on the Council website or in the report for this evening's meeting, we have a number of questions. What criteria are being used to measure the success of this scheme and what are the baseline metrics? The intention is to implement this scheme by way of an experimental traffic order valid for six months. The report on the table for this evening refers to scheme amendments. How will they be implemented during the six month period or any extension thereof? There are many questions regarding eligibility for virtu a virtual permit. How many vehicles per address in Sylvia Avenue can be registered free of charge? Do they all have to be registered with the DBLA to that address? How will teachers and others with legitimate purpose at Grimsdyke School have access during the restricted times? Will relatives of residents within the scheme be able to have a permit? How will taxis, blue badge holders and similar have penalty free access? How will visitors, nurses, carers, tradesmen, deliveries, etc. be permitted? How will any of the above be able to register in advance? Will the system be open 24 seven? How will their legitimacy to enter be determined? Will access by local authority vehicles be exempt? And if so, why? They are a major contributor to congestion. Why cannot they be rescheduled? And indeed, if all of the above are allowed to enter, what is the environment and safety benefit? Where will vehicles without entry permits park? Will vehicles without entry permits, such as they've entered the restricted time before the restricted time period, be able to leave the zone without a penalty? Will the scheme operate during school holidays? Whilst the permit is currently free, what guarantees are there that a charge will not be made in the future if the scheme is extended or made permanent? What is the penalty cost for entry with no permit? Where is that displayed? Who is the beneficiary of the penalties? What access will law enforcement and other agencies have to camera images and data? For how long will these records be kept? To further encourage walking, scooting and cycle riding and safer road crossing and irrespective of the parking review I mentioned earlier, Please can an experimental traffic order be used to expand the local 20 mile an hour zone to include the section of Grimsdyke Road from Uxbridge Road to Hallam Gardens and all of Hillview Road. Currently, in the absence of a marked layout, car parking in Shaftesbury Playing Fields car park is not optimised. The environment portfolio holder is requested to authorise the relevant council department to promptly mark out this space so that it is available from the commencement of this scheme to minimise on-street car parking at, school, at peak school traffic times. The response to this to the SS01 consultation in the coming months will be materially influenced by the imminent parking review outcome. When will this be in the public domain? Many residents are of the view that the consultation on the parking review is now compromised and invalid if SS01 is going to be continued after six months, a classic catch-22 situation. It would be helpful if the officer's report on the parking review 
and the SS01 consultation took into account both schemes and gave the implications if SS01 was terminated or it continued, or if necessary with an amended form indefinitely. Residents request that a leaflet plus a website link explaining the proposed scheme with all these questions and answers I mentioned earlier, and the res registration process is distributed to all houses who are invited to participate in the Greensdyke Road parking review. The leaflet should also explain the interaction of this scheme with the parking review, the timetable for taking this re review forward to stage two, and a proposal from officers to engage with residents suitably socially distant. In conclusion, and in the spirit of constructive engagement, I can make this presentation available to TASAC and or officers if this would be helpful, and also offer to meet officers with relevant councillors to insist in going forward. Thank you. Thanks very much, David. Are there any questions on the uh, David Summers at all? Um, Jerry, may I speak? Well, I don't see why not, John. Well, no, that's very kind of you. <laughs> First of all, David, thank you very much for coming along and thank you for all the hard work that you put in to making this deputation. Would you say if you had to award marks out of 10 for consultation skills, what score would you give to Harrow Council for this effort? M minus 10. I well, yes, I think that's probably your natural politeness coming through. I have do, to say that. Do, despite do, you the fact uh, that do, you want, do you want to ask a question about the scheme, John, at all? I beg your pardon. Would I you like to ask a question about, about the scheme? The scheme? Uh, OK. Um, do you think, David, that you would be willing to allow this scheme to go ahead um, on the interim basis for six months so that we can try it out. I would. I don't have such powers, but I think the community would allow it to go for the six months, provided the questions that I've enumerated earlier were fully answered and people felt comfortable with them and understood them, as well as the two requests that I've made, which were to have the 20 mile an hour zone put into Grimsdyke Road and Hillview Road. These two roads are extremely important for kids and their parents coming to school uh, from all sorts of directions. And also to have the car park marked out, which would take more cars off the road, parking across people's driveways and causing congestion. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Chair, Thank you. do you think it would be possible to push for those two uh, issues that David Summers has uh, raised, particularly yes, the certainly. car parking space and the 20 mile an hour limit? Yeah, yeah. Uh, David, Shim, are you, can, could you respond to that? Are you, David? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, well, I mean, I, I understand um, why you would want those things done. I think the difficulty we have is that, of course, CFL have switched off all our funding. Um, they, they haven't given us any funding for our local implementation plan because of their current crisis. The only funding they're offering us is, is this programme. So I guess it's a case of to what extent does the terms of the funding for this programme allow us to do those things. I think things like 20 mile power could be included not sure about the car parking, but there may be other ways we could look at that. So I think um, if you don't mind, uh, leave that with me to think about what's possible. Um, and if it comes to pass that you, you, know, you want this thing to go ahead, then then we can have further dialogue. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thanks, David. Thank you. Um, Chair, could I just pick up that? Chair? Yes, David, yes. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate if David Eagleson can find the relatively small amount of money to deal with the 20 mile an hour zone and if I could quite understand that perhaps marking up the car park may be a bit of a stretch for TFL 
but maybe the some budget or small amount. And I know budgets are very tight and all the issues are associated with that from another budget such as parks. And that's why I addressed it. My comment to the environmental portfolio holder who might be empathetic with this idea and can help to find some money. Okay. Um, are there any further questions? Tom? No. Right. OK, well, thanks very much for that presentation, David. Can I thank again all the uh, deputations uh, tonight? Um, we're very grateful that you spoke to us and gave us a chance to ask you questions. And thanks again to all the uh, uh, deputations tonight. OK, um, now can we move on to the backbench members uh, to speak? Uh, can I remind you all you are limited to just three minutes? OK, uh, so who, who wants to start? Philip, you, you popped up there, I think. <laughs> I did indeed. Thank you, Chair. Uh, oh, you up there now. Right, you, you, got, you have three minutes, Philip. Thank you. Um, as one of the councillors for Stanmore Park, my submission is in opposition to both the Green Lane and Dennis Lane proposals. Um, and I would suggest that these proposals are unreasonable. They're based on an unrealistic proposition that Green Lane and Dennis Lane are suitable candidates for a low traffic neighbourhood. Well, they're not, and they're not rut runs either, as the proposal seems to suggest. Partial closure of these two roads is going to have a major impact on traffic conditions within the Stanmore area. Access to Stanmore Hill from Green Lane is only one of the reasons why vehicles go up that road. There are three roads within Green Lane that are only accessible from Green Lane. And just as significantly, vehicle access to St John's School is to the top of Green Lane. If the top end of Green Lane is closed off, then the school traffic, which kicks off in September, will merely be diverted into other residential roads. And a similar situation applies to Dennis Lane, in which there are four roads accessible only from Dennis Lane. The reasons for vehicles entering these two roads are the same now as they were before the pandemic. It's not accepted that the volume of traffic using these roads will substantially reduce. And I would emphasize that targeting these two roads, and Green Lane in particular, is going to have a disproportionate impact on traffic conditions in Stanmore as a whole. Traffic will be forced into the Broadway and Stanmore Hill Junction. The already busy centre of Stanmore will become gridlocked. The final part of my submission is directed to one aspect of the Street Spaces programme insofar as it relates to Green Lane and Dennis Lane. Now, although not allocated as strategic cycling routes, the proposal nevertheless seeks to encourage walking and cycling as an alternative to driving. The proposal is pre predicated on promoting uh, a wide scale increase in cycling since the pandemic. Well, that's not happening in Dennis Lane and it's certainly not happening in Green Lane. Cyclists tend to stay away from those two roads for good reason. The top end of both roads are on steep gradients. Only a super fit cyclist would want to cycle up Green Lane and Dennis Lane, but that's only half the story. Cycling down each road on a steep gradient constitutes a danger not only to an inexperienced cyclist, but also to other road users as well. The council could not have picked two more inappropriate roads in order to promote cycling. I want to see uh, the Stanmore Park Road Network maintained as a functioning system and any alterations made for the good of everyone. <coughs> not all people can walk or cycle everywhere. These proposals are going to particularly impact on disabled elderly residents and young families who rely on their motor vehicles. So in summary, all these proposals are going to do is to force more vehicles onto the main roads. Residents' lives are difficult enough in these challenging times. Why add another layer of complexity? So I asked the panel to listen to local residents, listen to the 2000 residents who have signed a petition against this, respect local democracy and reject the partial road closures. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Philip. No, thank you for that. Uh, who, who wants to go next? Um, who is that? Marilyn, yes. Me. Oh, okay. Three minutes, Marilyn. Off, off yes, you go. But I, I'm just going to speak about Green Lane and then I'm going to speak about Dennis Lane later, okay? Okay, great, great. Yeah, um, Edward O'Connor spoke exceptionally well about the view. And although he didn't use these words, I think he summed it up rather well. 
the way I would put all of these proposals, or most of these proposals, is mission creep. I think it's always been something that the officers would have liked to, do, to have done, and obviously would never have got the agreement of anybody. And now they've decided they'll have a go and see what happens. And as Philip so eloquently said, I don't think that's a very good idea, particularly in the case of Green Lane. At a meeting that we had with the officers on Friday, I asked if they could take this off the table because Green Lane is in a conservation area at the top end. It's very steep. It's exceedingly narrow, so much so we've had to introduce regular regularised parking up on the pavement. There's a school at the top which is just slightly into Stanmore Hill, but effectively it's, it's off Green Lane. There's one entrance there. It's not a local school, it's a faith school, a Church of England school and a very good school. It will be going back hopefully in September. This is the government's priority. So therefore it will be busy. And also there's another entrance to St John's School at the other side of Embry Way. So if people can't manage, and they won't be able to if we close this road. And by the way, at the moment you can't access the road from Stanmore Hill anyway. You can only egress and leave the road. And then when you do leave the road on Stanmore Hill, you can only turn left. But getting back to the back entrance, that's off Embry Way, which is a quiet enclave. People will have to go through the old lodge estate up Winston Way, turn right and park there. We're going to have no end of problems with people complaining about parking and all sorts of issues. Nobody supports the closure of Green Lane. Not one person is absolutely driven people mad. They all think the council have been high handed and they have been really more motivated by getting funding for a scheme that should never happen. That's not right. And so, Chairman, it is a ridiculous idea. It shouldn't even be on the agenda. It doesn't need to be closed. It has plenty to make it safer and slow down the traffic. It has a 20 mile an hour zone. It has speed bumps. And as I said before, you can only go up Green Lane anyway. When you do, you have to turn left and that is and head up uh, Stanmore Hill towards the north. If this goes ahead, we're going to have a lot of problems in the surrounding area when the school goes back. And yes, um, there is a connection between this and Dennis Lane, and I'll talk to that one later, because if both these roads are closed, then I think that Stanmore Hill and Stanmore Broadway will be completely gridlocked. And I don't think we should do that to people. It's hard enough at the moment, life, without adding, as Philip so rightly said, to people's anxiety levels. It's really awful. So I would say to the panel, please listen to the people that have signed the petition. Please listen to the local council as I've represented the ward since 1998. I've lived in Stanmore for 44 years, all of my married life. And I know the area like the back of my hand. And I know that you cannot close Green Lane unless you want to cause a lot of problems, even if it's only temporarily. Thank you very much, Chairman. Right. Thank you, Marilyn. Right. Uh, who wants to go next? Sure, I can go. Sachin here. Sachin, yes. Yep. Come on, mate. Yeah. Okay. Th thank you, Chair. I want to address the panel on two proposals PS07, which is pedestrian space closing the parking front of shops, and SC01, cycle lane on Honeypot Lane. Now, PS07, shutting the parking in front of the businesses, has killed businesses, is killing businesses as we speak. The area, for those that don't know, is has a large number of restaurants and, and, and makes use of the nighttime trade a lot. This is an area where people wouldn't want to come, uh, wouldn't be able to uh, come by public transport, just doesn't work at that time, and it is uh, very difficult to cycle and walk. We have closed down the parking on that road. We are killing businesses and I urge I urge the panel. We've heard from a business earlier today about the damage done to his business. I urge the panel uh, to consider a recommendation to stop these pedestrian space schemes. They're not helping businesses. They're killing businesses just at the time uh, we need to see more of it. And now I want to move on to um, SC01, which is the cycle lane on Honeypot Lane. 
Now, cycle lanes are can be really good. I'm I'm in favour of good, well designed cycle lanes, and I always have been. However, to paraphrase Theresa May, a bad cycle lane, bad cycle lane is worse than no cycle lane. And in in this case, we have a bad cycle lane. It is dangerous. For, for, it is dangerous for those uh, at the end at the traffic lights turning left. Cars will cut straight into a cycle lane in, in a way that would be dangerous to cyclists. There are a number of left turns across the cycle lane on both Honeypot on both sides of Honeypot Lane. And in fact, there's a bus stop right in the middle of um, this cycle lane where if buses turn into that, a uh, cyclist will be injured. It will also cause rat running on, on minor roads. And I'm asking this, the, the, the panel today, I would love to see the cycle lane closed while we review it, but I'm asking the cycle lane, I'm asking the committee to do something slightly different. Is, is introduce a 20 mile an hour zone around the area. I'm really concerned about rat running caused by this cycle lane. And there's a there's a um, there's a service road to the to the left of Honeypot Lane. Would like to see that put in a 20 mile an hour zone. And there's some roads that will be used uh, as rat running. I've made these points to officers, and today we've heard that the funding from TfL would include 20 mile an hour zones. So there's nothing that intrinsically would stop a 20 mile an hour zone being added to the side of this cycle lane. Let's improve this cycle lane. And if we can't, I think we'll have to scrap it. But let's try, let's really try and improve this cycle lane, because if we can improve the cycle lane, we'll get more people cycling and actually implement what the council wants to do. I think that's positive. Um, we've heard uh, from many people about the consultation. It has been incredibly poor. So in, in summary, um, Chair, I'll, I'm, can I ask the panel to recommend we scrap PS07, uh, the pedestrian space that's killing businesses, and can I ask the panel consider a review, an urgent review uh, with ward councillors to implement a 20 mile an hour zone around the area to improve the cycle lane. Thank you. OK, thanks very much, Sachin. Obviously, we'll discuss that recommendation later on. Thank you. Uh, I need to, um, I just need to mention something very quickly. Um, yeah, I you're forgot. on the panel. You were on the panel. Right? You're yeah, um, oh, um, I forgot to um, declare non pecuniary interest because I live in Cannons Park. Apologies for that. Um, right. Okay, okay, that's it. Right. Right. Okay, thanks. Uh, right, uh, Paul, do you want to go next? Paul Osborne. Thank you very much, Jay. Um, I want to talk a bit more generally um, rather than about specific schemes. Um, I know my colleagues have, have issues with um, a number of the schemes, and I'm sure that they will talk about them. But I want to just touch on a number of areas. My first concern is really the lack of consultation in this whole process. I mean, if you look at the website the council's used, and I notice it's not really mentioned in the report, but actually 68% of the people who commented on the pedestrian space schemes were against them. 76.76% of the people who commented on the strategic cycle routes were against them. 79.3% were against the low traffic neighbourhoods. And 56.8% were against the street, the school streets programs. Okay? The only one that got any support was the opening up our high streets. Um, now I understand this is all being done in a rush, but it's worth noting that these applications were put in in the 22nd of May, and we have had time to do much more consultation than we've actually done. And I think that comes to my second problem, which is the lack of good decision making. It's really unfortunate that it's been necessary for us to call this special meeting of TARSAP. There was a meeting of TARSAP that was scheduled that could have dealt with this. There have been a number of meetings of cabinet that could have delegated powers. Um, I note this still isn't in the key decision schedule, even though it's the key decision and now has to go to the leader. I'm also concerned about the lack of detail in a number of the schemes. We still don't know how the safer neighbourhood, safer school scheme in Mulber Hill would necessarily work and how the permit scheme would work. We don't know that how existing right turns and existing traffic schemes would affect these schemes. We don't know how parking in Noah Hill will be sorted and how we can deal with the problems for Noah Hill School and how that will enable the school to open. Um, more fundamentally, I just worry that in doing all of this, we run the real risk of massively damaging the public support for some of these schemes that we want to do in the future. It's not just what we do in the decision we make today. 
It's what we could do for the future and the future support for these schemes. There is no point in putting all of these schemes in now, only to have to take them away six months time and be back in a worse position than we were in the beginning. What we should do is do fewer schemes, get them right and take the people with us. That way in the future, these schemes will still be in place in years to come and how will be a better borough to live in, to cycle in, to walk in. I just really worry that the rush we're going through and this take it or leave it attitude that we seem to be dealt with in the long term will be na do massive damage for what I think is really important, which is to deliver better streets in Howard. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thanks very much, Paul. Right, uh, who, who wants to speak want to Yes, Chair. Dennis Lane. I said I'd speak about that later. Oh, well, you only have three minutes. Yes. No, no, I'm sorry, um, Chairman. Um, my, my understanding of this is that uh, there are two items I want to speak on, uh, and I'd like to speak on Dennis Lane, if I may, please. Mm -hmm. Can I, I see, can, I, can I uh, seek some guidance on that? So, so Chairman, um, it, it's, it's a matter for you. Each member has been given um, three minutes. If you wish to give Councillor Ashton a short period of time to talk about the second scheme, then that's a matter um, for your consideration. All right. OK, Marilyn. Marilyn, yeah, you can come. Okay. Can I just yeah. Right, thank you. Very quickly, uh, Dennis yeah. um, is um, a different road to Green Lane and it is not afforded the same amount of protection. And we are acutely aware, all three of the Stanmore Park councillors, that there are residents living in Dennis Lane, whereas there aren't any in Green Lane, but to my knowledge that is, that would like the road to become a cul-de-sac. I understand, but on the other hand, there are lots of people living in Dennis Lane at the top end who are appalled at the idea. And of course, the width restriction would have to more or less be removed. And uh, there's an anxiety, of course, that in the event this is a failure and the road is opened again, without a width restriction, you can well imagine what would happen. There'd be some very large vehicles thundering up and down the road. But there's no question that it is different to Green Lane. There isn't a school in it. And it doesn't have a 20 mile an hour zone either. And it doesn't have speed bumps. It, rather, it has chicanes, which are not terribly successful. Having said all that, the top of Dennis Lane is still in a conservation area. It's in the Little Common conservation area. And the residents of Little Common, the residents of Stanmore Hall, the residents of Stanmore Hill, the residents in the wider area, and 2,000 people well over now signed a petition saying that they are against both of the schemes, but as I say, I'm addressing myself at the moment to Dennis Lane, Chairman. And all I will say is this, that as much as we want to please people, we like, would like to give them a nice, peaceful and quiet road, we are concerned in a wider context that closing the road completely would be a mistake. I did present a petition last year to the council uh, because the residents of Dennis Lane would like to have tried as an experiment what Green Lane has, which would cause more traffic because it would mean that you couldn't ac access the road from Wood Lane, but you'd be able to egress onto it and turn right or left. I think that would be quite controversial, Chairman. But having said that, um, that would be something that had this been a proposal for that, maybe we could get a little bit more enthusiastic about. But this is not that. This means the whole road will be closed at the top. It will mean that the width restriction will have to be removed. And the people trying to get to the Royal National Orthopaedic Hospital, the people that eventually will start to come back to uh, their place of worship, and there are two major ones in Wood Lane, both the Husseini Islamic Centre and the Mandar, the temple the Hindu temple along there, very busy and thriving, wonderful communities. There will be a lot of problems if we completely shut down this road at the top end. And I, I, I would be very concerned about the traffic and therefore I would respectfully ask the committee to reject this proposal, albeit we are sympathetic. Sorry, Councillor, it's Dr Gilani, your time is up. Yes, I know that. Thank you very much. For
Okay. Uh, Councillor Myers, it's Dakshi Gelani here. There are three other speakers that the committee agreed to allow to speak. Councillors yeah. Brown, Councillor Greek, and Councillor yeah. Rabadia. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, right. Okay. We'll have all those uh, backbenchers and then we shall take uh, May I, Jerry? a short yeah. comfort break. Who, who wants to go next? Okay, uh, Chair, I May can I, if I, like. Come on. Okay. Uh, who's first? Simon, I'll, I can go now. Simon. OK, I do apologise, Chair. My video camera broke earlier this morning while I was in a meeting, so no doubt some people will be grateful for that. Um, <laughs> so I just wanted to, to share some of my thoughts on schemes LTN02 and 06, which is Southfield Park and pin of view basically we seem to have split uh, headstone ward down down the middle on this uh, obviously uh, i've had a number of representations from, from people like mr o'connor who see that the closures will uh, mean that too ma many residents will have no choice but to go via harrow view uh, and for and that includes myself because uh, i live in one of the roads off pin of view uh, and i think from belton down 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 to the closure there are nine roads which will now exit on onto harrow view for myself I, I i can live with that in that it will cause me some inconvenience but the benefits i guess um i'm willing to accept we've also had and i've had representations from people with a, an opposing view who believe that the closure will have positive positive effects on cycling pedestrians on, on the environment and that backs up the petition that the sustrans um study was was based on um, a little while ago so one of the biggest topics of conversation and mail that i've had since becoming a councillor in headstone is residents raising concerns time and again over the volume and the speed of traffic firstly coming down pinner view the congestion that is caused down the lower end of pinner view approaching pinner road and i've had a lot of consultation responses from residents of Southfield Park and particularly Cunningham Park where there are real traffic problems. Only the other week I saw two guys uh, settling who had right away by getting out of the cars and starting a fight. Um, so there are also concerns raised to me by parents attending whose children attend Vaughan School. A lot of families living down that end of pin of view want to walk their kids to school without racing traffic. And of course, we have kids walking across, elder children walking across to Noah Hill. Um, so there's not a clear cut. It's not a clear cut decision. And I think on balance with one proviso and an amendment, I would support the scheme. Firstly, I asked uh, officers the other day that I would like a positive response from the emergency services, particularly the fire brigade that they have no objections to the scheme and can maintain their call out times to property in, in, in my ward and of course other wards as well, uh, rather than just informing them and expect and, and assuming that no response from the fire brigade means that they're happy with it. I'd like a positive response from them. And secondly, uh, given that we're going to be reviewing this on a monthly basis, I think very, yeah. very frequently, That's I right. would <coughs> like to suggest that my major concern is the barrier that closes pin of view at the junction of Grafton Road, as Mr O'Connor has raised. Um, so that, as I said, all traffic from Bolton down to Grafton has to use Harrow View. So what I'd like to suggest is that the scheme is implemented uh, without this one barrier and that we use the period as we're monitoring and assessing it to see if that has an effect. And if it becomes obvious that traffic is rat running down Belton, my road, Hyde Road, etc. Perhaps we could amend it and put a barrier across Pin of View, but perhaps where the ward councillors have previously suggested, not down as far as Grafton, but just close to, to Cunningham Park to see if, if that solves the problem. So overall, happy with the amendment to make life a lot easier for those roads like Grafton, Shandos. Um, and the roads in that area to access pin of view. Thank you, Chair. Right. Thanks, very much. Thanks very much, Sean. And <coughs> can't allow me to speak now. Uh, yeah. Yes, Chair. Thank you so right. much for that. Um, Three minutes. I'll, I'll be quick as well. So in Go essence, <laughs> I'm speaking on, on behalf of businesses in Harrow, specifically PS 07, 10 and 11, 
I'm going to lump them together because there are common issues which we've had the opportunity to discuss with officers and I hope I can present the same to you. Now, PS07 also presented a petition when the LTN01 petition was presented, so I don't know if you're aware of that. And we heard today from businesses and from Councillor Sachin Shah that how they are adversely affected. So it's no longer anecdotal. It is actually a fact that they're affected. I'd like to bring to the attention of this committee that um, those barriers or cones, or whatever you want to call them, they are very unwelcoming. So when you go to a business to shop, you should feel kind of invited. They actually don't. They make it look like something's wrong and you know something happening there and you know it's just not conducive to that and also one of the things i must highlight in all three places is the disproportionate effect on uh, standalone shops because you're closing down parkings um, and you're giving advantage to people like tesco express which one is in belmont circle one is just opposite the stretchfield road roundabout uh, and there's a tesco express just on the kingsbury roundabout and an oldie and in iceland and also the parents which have similar shops, but no sort of um, uh, the street space scheme like the Kingsbury R Street the, and further down Kenton Road, they get a disproportionate advantage. Now, in PS07, one business has specifically been given dispensation not to have, a, you know, to have their own parking, which are command offices, but that also creates this bit of um, question as to why one business got dispensation, not everyone else. The, the case of the pharmacy disabled badge was, uh, bay was already mentioned by a business person there. So, and there's sort of discrepancies there. And um, also, I don't know if the, uh, the council officers actually kind of tried to do this whole connection about, I think we've spoken a lot about how adversely, uh, you know, bay population has been affected just in terms of the impact of COVID. But I think you've also forgotten that most of these businesses are owned by BAME people and BAME shoppers. I wonder if any thought was given or any, any study or research was done into how it impacts them. Um, another big issue that I don't think anyone has realized that there's a big problem being deliveries because deliveries are only done by large trucks for the sake of efficiency. And a few businesses have actually confirmed that deliveries have been stopped or canceled in so many times because they simply cannot park on double yellow lines outside which are provided and which is just not feasible because they're going to be there for a while to deliver. Some shops are actually missing deliveries. There is a shop at PSO7 which hasn't qualified for any of the council grants because they just happen to be above the limits and pressures where they, apply, they get grants. Their deliveries have been stopped and the deliveries are not getting dropped. So I think it's a bit unfair that they're, they're, they're putting it in, in some kind of adverse position and I seriously think this committee should be considering suspending PS07, 10 and 11, because we've had adequate time to, to consider the impact. Um, as mentioned, there is a four week window which has already passed. This has been there for more than four weeks. The impact has been felt. I don't think we can wait any longer for more businesses to close. And you should seriously, seriously consider uh, stopping the schemes at PS07, 10 and 11. Thank you, Chair. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Mayor. Right, uh, I think is uh, Stephen Creek here. Uh, yes, Chairman. Uh, Hello. Thank you very much. Okay, Stephen. Hello. Three, three minutes, Rob. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, good evening. Uh, good evening, Chairman and panel members, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to address you this evening. Um, I'd like to raise con some concerns with you about the uh, new cycle lane um, on Oxford Road, Harrow Weald, um, scheme SC09 and um, the way that it's been implemented. My colleagues and I have already received many comments about this from local residents. It's of course important to make proper provision for cycling in Harrow, but this has to be done in a safe, considered and joined up way. Unfortunately, in this case, the opposite is true. What has been put in place will, will be bad for residents, bad for traffic and bad for cyclists. The new cycle lane has been installed very crudely, taking over an entire lane of traffic. This is highly disproportionate and will have a significant impact on congestion and highway safety. This is already a very busy arterial road and the junction with Oxy Lane and Courtney Avenue is particularly hazardous, even more so with the distraction of the forthcoming adventure golf course with its tall, noisy dinosaur installations. Um, at busy times, this road already suffers from congestion and gridlock and this will make things considerably worse. 
I don't see how this stretch of road can possibly be the safest option for cyclists, especially when there are better, safer and quieter alternatives. I'm particularly concerned about the interaction between buses and cyclists, as buses will need to pull into the left hand lane to reach the bus stops along this road, and that could potentially be very dangerous. As it stands, this new cycle lane is not part of any defined cycle routes. There are already a number of specific cycle routes in the area that are either planned or in place and on much more suitable roads. This includes the northern route that is under construction nearby and actually specifically steers cyclists away from the Oxford Road. Um, this does not, there does not appear to be any great demand for cycling along the Oxford Road. And even if there was, uh, this should be provided in a thoughtful and considered way not just by suddenly removing a whole lane of traffic. I cannot see how this cycle lane is going to be well used or a good use of taxpayer money. Um, it is far more likely to be empty for the vast majority of the time uh, with vehicles stuck in a single lane, blockages along this key uh, route and increased air, air pollution. It would be much better if, if this particular cycle lane were, were removed as far as, as, as soon as possible and any proposal for permanent provision be put forward in the normal way with proper design, consultation and scrutiny. The current cycle lane certainly shouldn't be made permanent and careful thought and consideration should be given to any future scheme in this location or nearby. I would therefore be grateful if you would formally note these concerns and consider them in your recommendations to Cabinet. Uh, whilst I'm here, I'd also like to add a few words about the proposed closure of Green Lane um, and its impact on my residence at Harrow Weald, um, about which we've also received significant concerns. On busy days, uh, Stanmore traffic already causes significant congestion into Harrow Weald, especially along the Oxford Road, and closing off Green Lane will have a disastrous impact on this situation, adding more and more pressure into this bottleneck. I'd therefore like to add my, my voice and the voice of my colleagues um, to calls for this awful pro proposal to be scrapped. Thank you for listening to my submission this evening. Thanks very much, Stephen. Right, uh, I think we've now had all the uh, backbenchers. So what I'm proposing now is we have a five minute comfort break. And uh, when, when we come back, uh, the officers will hopefully briefly, if they can, uh, I I introduce uh, the, the schemes. Then we can have a, a debate on the schemes and hopefully move to some sort of a re re recommendation when, when we've had the debate. OK, so we'll have a, a comfort break now for five minutes. OK, thank you. <coughs>
on a Sorry, Chair, can, can we can we make ens ensure that a quorum is present? Yeah. So we have um, Councillor okay. David Perry, yourself. I can't yeah. see any other councillors yeah. on my screen. Uh, John Hinckley is here, James Lee, oh, and, okay, then. And, 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 Thank and, you. and John is. Right. Thank right. Thanks for coming back, I suppose. Right, um, I'm going to restart the meeting now. Um, right, so we're now looking at well, item five, which is the Harrow Street Spaces Programme 2021. Uh, can members please note the supplemental agenda is covering Appendix A? Right. OK, so can I ask one of the officers to briefly, if, if that is at all possible, uh, go through the the actual schemes that are presented before us for tonight? Uh, Michael, are you doing that? Or is, is, I am, Chairman. I am, right. thank you. OK, um, right. Good evening, Chairman. Good evening, panel. Uh, good evening, visitors and members. Um, this is a quick introduction into the uh, into the, the task set report that you're reviewing this evening. So the COVID-19 health emergency has significantly affected the way in which we work and travel. The government is providing two billion pounds to support areas of high level of public transport, such as London, to take measures to reallocate road space to people who are walking and cycling to encourage active travel, enable social distancing, and prevent an increase in private car use that would detrimentally affect the road network. Currently, the bus and rail systems can only take up to a fraction of the normal capacity and therefore there is significant potential for many journeys to convert to private car instead as the economy opens up and more journeys are made. Harrow, along with the other London local authorities, applied to Transport of London for funding for pedestrian space, low traffic neighbourhood and school street schemes as part of the street space programme. Separate funding has been made available from the Department of Transport directly to be used on strategic cycling schemes. The schemes have been developed in accordance with the applicable criteria and publicised online via the engagement portal. And more recently, officers have met with all councillors in relation to schemes in their wards. There are two supplementary reports to the main report which provide additional information in this regard. This report collates all of the comments, feedback and contributions to the schemes for the panel, including more councillors' feedback, so the panel can consider which schemes should be recommended to proceed to implementation. It is worthwhile noting and remembering that the duration of the schemes are temporary. So very firstly, the pedestrian space schemes that have already been implemented at an earlier stage in a programme are temporary and will only and, only and will be removed when no longer required. And secondly, all other schemes are experimental using temporary or low cost measures that can be easily removed at a later date following a detailed review after about six months. The report also indicates an additional regular review process for schemes so that they, their impact can be regularly monitored and adjustments made quickly as and when they are necessary. So the funding is available at short term nature and any schemes recommended for implementation need to be completed by the end of September to comply with the funding requirements. The seven, eight weeks remem remaining represents the minimum length of time to successfully deliver these. Thank you, Chairman. Right, thanks very much. OK, so um, before I invite comments and questions from members of the panel, I'm conscious of the time. I think we've already been here nearly two hours. And uh, once we ensure there is sufficient time to debate on the low schemes, uh, especially the one that members uh, don't support at the present time, and they are uh, LTN 05 Green Lane Stanmore, LTN 07 Byron Road Wheelstone, LTN 08 Dennis Lane Stanmore and LTN 09 Prince's uh, Drive area in Wheelstone. Um, obviously um, colleagues can raise other uh, schemes as well, but um, I think we particularly need to pay attention to those. Um, can I also confirm that uh, SC10 Jewel to Fifth Avenue Hatch End will be reviewed by officers. And uh, I'd like to, before we get into a debate about other schemes, put forward uh, a, a motion uh, about that. Um, so if members are agreeable, I'll put forward the motion to improve the, approve the Jewel to Fifth Summer Call Scheme for implementation. Uh, as set out on Appendix A, Table 4 of 
experimental basis from September 2020, subject to officers first conducting a review of, of this scheme and considering whether uh, um, amendments can be made to reduce the length of the scheme uh, to avoid it continuing past Noah Hill School or to incorporate um, dedicated cycle lanes without the need uh, to um, utilize, utilize a lane either side of the road. Uh, this review to be fit, fed back to the leader of the council uh, when making his uh, <coughs> decision on this scheme. So is that all right with members? It's basically saying that it'll it will go back to the officers who will look look at ways to, to improve and, 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 and amend the scheme before it goes ahead. Agreed. Is that? Agreed. Can I just um, agreed? Time scales. Amit, sorry, yeah, yeah. Can I just um, seek uh, clarification on time scales of when the amended um, scheme would come back, and if it's still part of. Uh, the um the implementation date as part of the report. Yeah, well, well I mean, it, it's designed still to go in, but before it does, the officers will, will look at uh, amending the scheme uh, uh, as re regards to Noah Hill School and, and cycle lanes. Um, but we'll once that is done, it is still planned to go ahead uh, uh, n n next month. Yeah. But will TASAP have an opportunity to um, review that the, the amended scheme? Oh, of course, yeah. I mean, that, that, I'll, I'll say that later on. I mean, there's a monthly, uh, uh, as Michael said, that there is a, a review that takes place on a monthly basis. So, you know. If it's, Chairman, if it's still, I, think, I think it's fair to say that TASAP wouldn't have an opportunity to review it before the leader made a decision. Um, so, they wouldn't necessarily be able to review it before it was implemented in September, um, but there would there's a review process incorporated, which is one of the recommendations. So I'd, I'd just like to add that I'm quite um, nervous about that because at least we members are and the public are at least aware of the proposal at the moment, whereas at the moment what you're saying is no one has any idea what's going to go ahead um, in the future. So if I can maybe request through the chair, if at least if there's some notification yeah. of that new proposal and then have an opportunity to, to um, you know, uh, have a say on it. Certainly, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, if you don't have the task that meeting, I'll, I'll th think the members will, will be no, no, no notified of, of the changes. And, yeah. Okay. Right, OK. Uh, and John, I think. Thank you, Chair. Um, I actually um, I don't think that uh, I would like to leave it uh, completely um, up to the officers to make the decision, um, because if they are not going to come back with whatever the amend, amendment is that they are, uh, they are going to recommend, um, I feel um, very, very nervous about it to go ahead with this then. Right. Can you um, hear me? Not, not, not all that well, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, I mean, I, I, do, I think... Do you want me to, no, no, to repeat, do you no, want me to repeat I mean, myself? No, no, it's all right. I, I think I've got it. I mean, Sarah, can, if you don't have a task that meeting, can at least the... Uh, uh, myself and Emily being involved, or, or also, and or the environment uh, portfolio, portfolio holder. So we we can incorporate that that members of TASAP are informed, and the portfolio holder is informed. Um, so so this is to be clear. This is about officers looking at whether there's any options to amend the scheme to take account of some of the views that have been expressed officers can't give any assurance at this time that that can be done um, because that might not be approved by the funder um, and then that review would be fed back to the leader to make a decision. We could incorporate into that the opportunity for TARSAT members to be notified and for the portfolio holder to be um, consulted but obviously the timing of this I think members need to be aware 
that this funding, this scheme needs to be implemented by the 21st of September. So the timing is very tight. OK. So, OK, Anjana. Yes. I mean, uh, yes. sorry, if I can, I, I'm, I'm sure um, Anjana Council Patel will also agree with me that our main, just to open it up to the panel, if, if everyone feels comfortable of letting a decision just bypass TASAP and, and a notification or just being informed, even that means nothing at all. I mean, I don't think we should be out of this sort of time pressure of um, because we represent local residents and if we all have a duty to give. I'm, I'm only speaking about this because the level of interest it's um, stirred up and I think we should all have a say on how it's uh, put into practice rather than just being notified it you know that it means nothing if if say officers are given them um, come to come back with a revised scheme in a day or two and we can reconvene virtually as well under TASAP and uh, have another look at it at least that by that way we'll all have a say mm. okay. may I speak chair Yes, all right, John. Yes, certainly. Yes. Um, we've already had one special TASAP, so why don't we solve this problem by calling another special TASAP to debate it? It seems self evident. We are practiced at doing it, and I'm sure all members would agree that this would be a way of um, easing any anxieties that um, members have. So you want a special task that just to discuss George V, uh, that one yeah. article. And yeah, any other, not. well, yes, why not? It will be a very quick meeting. Um, does that mean that all panel members would have to be present? Because um, I'm a bit concerned that we're longing this out and continuing to have conversations or repeated conversations about this. Um, to be honest, I liked what Jerry said in terms of suggesting that the ward councillors meet on that specific issue with council officers to discuss. Yeah. I, I don't think TASAP needs to have a, a, a another meeting just to discuss that. I, I think if, if we're informed what's happening and ward councillors are, are, are involved, I, I think that's uh, su su sufficient. Jerry, Jerry, it's Paul Walker. I'm, I'm just wondering whether it's worth asking Sarah just to kind of repeat the, the proposed recommendation, just so everyone is clear what the what you what you suggested to the panel before. Yeah, all right, Sarah. Yeah, because uh, I, I can't read all that well. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Sarah oh, there. Okay, so the the original part of the recommendation is as written in um, number five. Um, to approve the George V Avenue cycle scheme. So this is obviously a recommendation to the leader uh, exercising the executive powers. So to approve the George V Avenue cycle scheme for implementation as shown in Appendix A Table 4 on an experimental basis by September 2020, subject to officers first conducting a review of the scheme and considering whether amendments can be made to reduce the length of the scheme to avoid it continuing past Noah Hill School or to incorporate dedicated cycle lanes without the need to utilise a lane either side of the road. Such review to be fed back to the leader when making his decision. Thank you. So I think it's important to remember that the timings for these decisions, we're already looking at a leader decision because it hasn't got time to go to the executive. Um, so we have to incorporate time for calling and um, process and then we have to implement the scheme it has to be completely implemented by the 21st of September. So that might sound like a lot of time. On my calculation, it's not sufficient time to call another special TASIP meeting. You can only call that meeting if you get a certain days, number of days notice. Um, so there is a difference between members being notified um, and having a formal um, advisory panel meeting. OK, right, so we'll leave it. I mean, so, sorry, I, I, I don't have one on this. Right I, I think we should really move on. We've got all the other schemes to look at. Chair, I've, I've indicated to speak and I don't know, are we using the hand up signal or are we just interjecting? How do we do that? No, well, it's all right, Dave, go on. No, no, I'll, I'll, I'll count the jogger. I'm, I'm happy to come in after. 
No, I, I think. Thank you. There, I, I, I just wanted to say my my point was about accountability. So, if TASAP yeah. doesn't have a say. It, it can the panel confirm that at least ward members can have a sign final say if they're not happy with the scheme, they can at yes. least have an opportunity yes. Yes. to say. Yes. Or yes. that that's quite reasonable as long as that's recorded. Thank you. That ward councillors will have the final right. say. Okay. <laughs> right. Thank you for that. Right. Um. So. Um. We, we've had a briefing. Chair, from... Chair, can I? I've indicated to speak about ten minutes ago. Sorry, I, I, I couldn't yeah. see you, Dave. Dave. Yeah, no, Dave. No, are, we, are we using the hand up signal? Or are we not using that tonight? I'll uh, just so I'm clear, because I've wanted to speak a few times, but and I just want to come in really just on process and decision making, and we yeah. are where we are. Um, I support the recommendation with regards to George V. Um, I think it's important for people who don't know about this scheme that there's been huge contention on this with regard to the, the head teacher, uh, residents, stakeholders. And I agree, I do understand the democratic um, services angle around time and running out of time. But the officers, I think, have to date been very welcoming to consulting probably on an informal basis with, with with ward members and others interested parties and I actually support Councillor Jogia and Councillor Patel's comments around wanting to be involved in decision making but one thing I would like to put to this panel and as an experienced member of the panel and the council if members on either side of the political divide feel that they're being bounced into a decision and we run out of time so be it the scheme doesn't get implemented we don't we do things right um, and so I think that needs to be said categorically from both sides of, of the divide, if you look at political terms. Yeah, I think everybody is uh, not, not, not nodding there. So, <laughs> OK, thanks very much, uh, David. Right. Um, OK, so. Uh, I think we're now into comments on, on the, the schemes. I mean, we've had the officers report, we've had the deputation, the backbenchers. So, uh, do members of the panel wish to comment on any of, of the schemes before we try to move to a, a final re recommendation of the schemes? Uh, and Joanna. And Joanna. Your mic's off. Your mic's off. Mm. Nobody can hear you, Anjana. You need to unmute your mic. Well, your mic's off. I'm so sorry. That's OK, right. um, thank you very much, Chairman. I would like to speak um, to you about the um, the Ellen uh, 05 and Ellen 08. We obviously had um, a residents um, talking about it. We've got lots of petitions um, signed by residents and we also had uh, councillor back benching it. And I personally feel that we need to listen to um, people. Uh, there is no point in implementing things just hiding behind uh, is the word I will use. Uh, COVID that um, that we actually want to implement. So I, I personally feel that we should not do that. And this Dennis Lane scheme is really going to have an impact on the uh, the temple and the mosque which is there. So I would urge all the panel members to actually um, reject this scheme and just leave. I, I, I would like to use a phrase here, um, Chairman. Um, why fix it when something's not broken? And I don't think we really need uh, none, any of these schemes. And as we say that, please do not talk about cycling and walking. Nobody is going to walk so long and nobody is going to cycle up until and unless you are an athletic person or some kind of a person who's going to take part in, in, in a, in, in a uh, uh, competition or something. But I don't think ordinary people can do that. So I really urge you, Chairman, um, that you will um, give this a full consideration. Um, I will talk about everything that I want to in one go, so then I don't have to come back in again. Um, I have gone around. I have gone around and spoken to businesses on Stretchfield Road, and I've gone and speak to businesses on Kenton Lane and on Honeypot Lane. Or everywhere wherever I have gone, I have been clearly told 
that they do not want these barriers, uh, which is actually a hinder to their businesses, and the businesses are going down. In some instances, I've been told that the businesses are 45% down since those barriers have come up. Now, as far as I know, we are in a time where we have to be helpful to people and not be um, in, in their way, um, is what I would say, or in fact, uh, in, inflect, inflect, inflect upon them something which is not necessary, is what I would like to say here. So, and there has been, and Kanti Rabadi actually said it very, uh, very elegantly that he's also had the same things um, said to him about deliveries going back, uh, footfall is not coming, uh, even Disabled Bay has been moved, which was in the middle near the pharmacy, and all kind of issues are there. So I would actually urge you, Chairman and the panel member, to actually get remove the barriers on PS7, PS8, PS10 and PS11 is what I'm urging all my colleagues to do. And if I have been, if, if anybody is going to say no to that, then I want an urgent review now on all, all those schemes. It is no point going and asking um, uh, the uh, uh, shop owners that is your business going down because of the barriers? Yes, it is going down. We already know about it. So there is no need to ask that question to people uh, because we already know we have spoken to them. So I would urge, please, please make sure that those barriers are removed tomorrow is what I would urge. Thank you. Right, OK. Uh, Chairman, on, that, uh, on that note, uh, sorry. Chairman, just before we progress, I think as Councillor Perry indicated, there's a, there's a number of members of the panel who've indicated to speak and are still waiting yeah, to um, speak. Can I, I've got the uh, two advisors who said they want to speak, but I, I can't see who they are, unfortunately. Uh, who, who wants to speak from the? I'm not sure who it is. So I think you have Anoop Shah and Jeremy Leach who both indicated they wish to speak. All right. Okay. A a Anoop first. Are you there, Anoop? And Councillor James Lee has also indicated. Yeah, yeah. I know that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a Anoop. Okay. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, oh, right, great. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah. So I, well, I, on behalf of the, the House Cyclists and the Healthy Streets for Harrow campaign, we strongly support all the proposals that Harrow Council has put. And uh, just in response to some of the, the issues that have been raised, and first of all, it is a real issue and it is really urgent because COVID has been a pandemic and has uh, made a major effect on on the NHS and on people's livelihoods, and if uh, if public transport use was to increase, there's a risk of uh, increased disease transmission, and also uh, people's general health uh, needs to be improved. And the, and we already have the highest rate of diabetes in Harrow at ten percent. That's the highest in London. And um, if people switch to to driving, uh, TfL estimates that there could be a thirty four percent increase in in traffic and we already know that even with schools closed traffic uh, motor traffic throughout the country is back to pre-covid levels so this is urgent action that needs to be taken we know that all the hospitals have to completely reorganize their services to cope with covid so this is the reorganization of the road space that needs to happen and there is a very clear directive from central government to specify that road space needs to be reallocated to walking and cycling with uh, predominantly low traffic neighbourhoods using barriers and also pop up cycle lanes. And the schemes that have been selected, they are uh, the initial schemes, but actually there are more low traffic neighbourhoods that are needed throughout the borough as per the TfL strategic neighbourhood analysis. And if we look at the implementation of low traffic neighbourhoods, there's always almost always opposition initially because people can't envisage what the benefits are going to be and they don't they don't know what it's going to be like. They don't know how they're going to then change their behaviour. They're going to probably drive less, they're going to walk more, they're going to enjoy walking more and research on the low traffic neighbourhoods done as part of the mini Holland scheme shows that people 
were walking half an hour more per week on average. So the the consultations usually it's a, a long process usually because of, uh, lots of people have diff lots of different opinions. And but in this case, obviously, that's not possible because these changes need to be put in place rapidly before schools reopen. And that's why the government has required these emergency measures to be put in place. And therefore, the consultation, which which has happened through the, the commonplace website, people have been putting suggestions there, people have been informed. Um, but the actual understanding of what the scheme will be like will happen during the trial phase. So it's, a, it's an experiment of six months, which is we know that it's not going to be harmful. It may be. Uh, maybe people will appreciate the benefits during that time, and then obviously there'll be a consultation on a permanent scheme. And low traffic neighbourhoods, they have many benefits because they discourage driving for short distances. They make the roads uh, safe and um, and quiet, amenable to walking and cycling. And they can be achieved at very at low cost and and are very effective. So I'm just going to briefly mention the specific schemes. So the Dennis Lane and um, Green Lane schemes. These are very similar to Roland Hill Avenue, which is also sort of leads north. It's parallel to um, Oxy Lane, and it's it's been it's had a, a modal filter closing off the end for many years. And I'm pretty sure that residents haven't been asking for that to be reopened. So once the scheme's in place. Generally, people do not want these low traffic neighbourhoods to be to be removed and for traffic to be reinstated. Um, and with regard to some of the specific questions about increased traffic, um, we know that there will be increased traffic if we do nothing. Uh, but the evidence from low traffic neighbourhoods and other traffic uh, road closures and road space reductions is that people change their driving behaviour and, and typically there there isn't an increase on parallel main roads. In the longer in the longer term, um, and obviously if there are wider improvements throughout the borough, then this will be even more effective in reducing traffic. And Harrow currently has one of the lowest rates of cycling in in London. There's there's a massive scope to increase that. Hills are not an issue with electric bikes, which are increasingly popular, and we know that the the traffic calming is insufficient because because modern cars can drive so quite fast there, and that has still been an ongoing problem. And and if we move on to the the shopping uh, area schemes, so businesses obviously have been affected by by COVID, and and we we're, we're keen to support businesses. And the mayor's plan is to encourage people to shop uh, shop locally to make local high streets pleasant and improve walking and cycling links. So we certainly recommend low traffic neighbourhoods in the areas around them and maybe consider uh, pedestrianising some areas, providing space for alfresco dining. And we know that businesses tend to overestimate the number of uh, people who come by car and people who come by walking and cycling often tend to visit more often and, and spend more overall. The Pinner View low traffic neighbourhood, obviously uh, we've had a campaign and there's been a petition there, so um, glad to hear that there's a positive recommendation for that. Um, we would advise against leaving a route open for motor vehicles because that would just then become the single rat run. And it'd be better to implement the whole scheme and to then have a consultation process to decide what the final scheme should look like, because it may be that some of the filters can be moved to change the access routes. School streets are uh, widely implemented in other boroughs and, and successful at making it safer for children to walk or cycle to school. And that's the, an important aim, particularly as uh, bus capacity is reduced. And, we, and with the level of childhood obesity in Harrow, we want to encourage active travel to school as much as possible. Uh, Honeypot Lane scheme is a, I mean, it's not a perfect scheme, but it is an, an improvement on what's there before. There's uh, dedicated space for cycling and we would certainly recommend that the scheme is improved rather than risk of, of closure. The the bus stops obviously do need to be uh, sorted out in a more permanent scheme, but the bus 
it's not a very busy bus route, so that's not a problem for this for the short term. Um, obviously, there is a danger of cars cutting in into the to service roads and into surrounding residential areas. So a low traffic neighbourhood and maybe closing some of the service roads to access would maybe a timed uh, deliveries or something to make the area nicer for shopping and prevent uh, prevent its use by by rat running traffic. And the Uxbridge Road and George the Fifth Avenue cycle routes were in the, two, the, the 2003 vision for cycling. So they were already proposed by, um, it was then the Conservative administration under Susan Hall as part of the Mini Holland submission. So these desire lines have been, have been there since that time. Um, we would certainly recommend that the the Georgia Fifth Avenue scheme goes ahead in full because the most important part of the scheme is to protect protect children cycling to school, and that and that means that the bit the section nearest the school needs to be put in place. And as far as we know, there wasn't um, there wouldn't be a way of keeping car parking as well as having a safe cycle lane there. And the Uxbridge Road scheme. I was, there were concerns that it was bad for traffic or bad for congestion, but actually Uxbridge Road is only one lane for most of the route anyway. And the scheme needs to be extended rather than rather than removed. Um, and it needs to be upgraded to a, to a permanent scheme as soon as possible. And there was a mention of the, the Northern Cycle Route, which actually part of it does go on Uxbridge Road anyway. So that's not really a valid, uh, a valid argument against it. Um, so we would certainly recommend that going ahead with all this, all the schemes as planned. Some of them maybe have some tweaks and improvements, but it's really important for the future of Harrow and for getting future funding for TfL that that Harrow shows commitment to active travel, which means uh, implementing these schemes, even though there is opposition, but we know that a lot of the opposition is because people don't fully fully understand these kinds of schemes when they are when they are proposed. And we would be able then be able to see over the next few months as the schemes bed in, as people get used to them, as people experience the new uh, walking and cycling routes, uh, that that hopefully they'll become more supportive. And certainly that's what's been found elsewhere. Right. Thank you. Right, thanks very much, Anu. Um, I think there was one other advisor who wanted to speak, but I can't see who it was. Hi, um, it's Jer Jeremy Leach. I'm very happy. Jeremy. Hi, yeah. Jerry. Right. I'm, I'm very happy if, council if Councillor Lee would like to speak first, because I think he also wants to speak. That's that's fine, obviously. Um, it, it, the advisors go first, and I'll speak after. Thank you. All right. That's okay. Lovely. Carry Thank on, Jeremy. My name is Jeremy Leach. I'm the chair of London Living Streets and obviously I don't know the borough as well as you do, but I just want to give a tiny bit of context to the conversations that you're having this evening and I'd like to thank you for inviting me. Um, I, I do feel that the, the plan that's been put together is a welcome and a bold, a bold and appropriate plan in relation not only to um, the TfL Streetscape for London guidance and um, the guidance, but it also really starts to meet the needs of some of the active travel and public health issues that Harrow faces. And I know, I know I'm know, i very clear that there's consternation around the issues around this being an emergency response. I also think there are this, these measures are a starting, a starting point to address other issues. And I'd just like to set those out really clearly. First of all, um, it's important to note that Harrow has the fifth lowest levels of freak, frequent walking, the fifth lowest levels of frequent walking across the, of any London boroughs. More than 50% of adults are either overweight or obese, and more than one in five year six children are obese. That's not overweight and obese, that's at obese levels. Car ownership levels are the second highest in London, and in terms of 20 mile an hour speed limits, which a number of speakers have talked about earlier, it's less than 25% of roads in London, which is one of the lowest. So I think there's an awful lot of things that Harrow needs to address that I feel these these are a very appropriate starting point for um, starting point to address them. I'm, I'm not going to go into the benefits of cycle lanes because I think Dr. Charles already looked at that very well. But I would just say just to back up the point about low traffic neighbourhoods, 
the, the research that's been done shows significant benefits in three key areas. First of all, air pollution. Secondly, improves levels of walking and activity. And, the, you know, there is an improvement in cycling levels, but the real public health benefits are around improvements in walking levels. And finally, people really start to like their local environment better. So um, I, I think overall, I will I will stop there. I do I do think there's a really strong fit with the guidance. I think this is an appropriate plan, and I think it starts to address some of the long term issues that Harrow, to a degree, has not addressed in over in the past. And I think this is a really good start to it, and I welcome I welcome the council's plan. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Uh, can I have James? You want to come next, uh, and then David Perry will, will come. Yeah. Uh, James. Yeah, first of all, I just want to say thank you to everyone which has spoken on all um, the schemes. Um, obviously, everything we can do as a council to promote cycling or walking is great for everyone, but obviously there's some concerns on how some schemes have been implemented and how they will be implemented. Um, on that regard, I hope this is the right time to do it, but I'd like to propose a motion to uh, reverse the pedestrian schemes PS07 and PS08. Would anyone like to second me on that? That's Honeypot Lane and Stretfield Road. I'll set second, happy to second the uh, urgent reversal of PS7 and 08. Right. Um, <clears throat> right, I suppose we'll have to go through the list of members to see if that's agreed then yeah right okay so i'll go through the list of members of the panel and you've got to agree whether you agree with that recommendation or not uh, councillor assad sorry what was the recommendation to remove it completely both of them yes yes yeah, yeah. Just, you say the numbers again PSO yeah, seven and PSO PSO seven and PSO eight. They're to do with the shops, which have been hitting businesses. And we've had and quite a few. Uh, get rid of the, well, any sort of uh, re 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 review beforehand. Just get yep, no review. All right, okay. Um, right, Kaimana. Um, I really don't know how to vote on this one. Can I abstain? John, John Hinckley. Um, I agree they should be removed. All right, uh, Councillor Jogia. Uh, yes, I agree they should be re uh, removed. And obviously you're in favour, aren't you, <laughs> James? Right. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, we've Anjana, had. Anjana, are, are you in favour of removing those? It should be removed immediately, but I actually wanted to add the other two to it, not just this two. I wanted to add PS10 and PS11 to it, please, as well, James. And right. I'll um, second it, or I'll propose that. Um, if we can deal with these two first of all, and then we can... I think we need to deal with one amendment at a time. Um, and have, have you got anything in writing that you can send? Because it's very difficult for the minute taker when... Is there anything that you can email to governance yep. officer about what you're actually proposing so it could the recommendation can actually be read out yeah i can put it on the chat group if you want or do you want me to email it direct to you sarah well, I, just, well it's, it's daksha who needs it and we need to be absolutely clear that all members know what the proposed amendment is so that they know exactly what they're voting for because this will obviously be a recommendation to the um, leader when making a decision. OK, so mine is quite simple. I want to propose a motion to reverse the pedestrian schemes PSO7, and I'll write this down and get it off Stretfield Road, Queensbury shops, and PSO8, Honeypot Lane, Cannons Park shops. It's as simple as that. Um, right. And I can type that down if you want. So it's a Yeah, if you can motion. type it into the chat just so that we've got a record of it. Yeah. Right. OK. Um, so I think uh, Councillor David Perry, do, do, do you support that, that in this motion? Uh, yeah, we obviously we've just had it been thrown at us across the across the Skype right now, so it's, it's very difficult. But based in principle, I'm happy to 
to support based on the very articulate um, deputation which was made by business and earlier. Um, we are in only an advisory panel, so um, it would be within the uh, the gift of, of the leader or portfolio, the leader to, to ignore that recommendation. So in, in order to support business, happy to support. But again, you've just thrown it at me right there. All right. Well, I mean, I don't support it because I'd rather go through a review as is set down in the recommendations. But I think there is a majority uh, in favour of uh, uh, re removing those two schemes from the proposal. OK, right. Uh, and Joanna, I suppose you've got your your schemes now. Yeah, I was it not. OK, I'll go after that. No problem. And no, Joanna, you've got it. Uh, OK, thank you. Um, I would like to um, uh, reverse um, the PS10 and PS11 um, immediately as it is in, uh, impacting the businesses. And as far as uh, I'm concerned, the government guidelines actually says that um, one metre minimum um, distance or, uh, or else where possible more. And on those payments, there is more than one metre distance on the payments. So as far as I'm concerned, there is no need for these um, schemes to be in place anymore. Thank you. All right, so I'll go through the so, list again. Uh, so yeah. Councillor Patel, can we have clear words in on what you're you're putting forward as, a, as an amendment and then we need someone to second I it? Just, I just said, I just said that I, uh, sorry, I don't know uh, whether this is enough. If not, I'm quite happy to actually send it to you via email. Yeah, but as I, I said, just, just the businesses, we just have the, the word in rather than the reasons. So, so you're putting forward a recommendation that the following two schemes to are to remove the barriers. Removed. Yeah. So to remove the barriers for schemes. So that, so that the businesses. Sorry, I can't hear you. So, sorry, so to remove the barriers for, can you just be clear which two schemes? Um, PS10 and PS11. OK, so if you look at the wording that Councillor Lee has put forward, is yours the yes. same, but just substituting PS? Sorry, yes, it is. It, yeah. yeah, and eleven. Yes, it is. And I would, I would actually want to also say that uh, the government recommendation is uh, one meter minimum distancing, and on those payment, there is more than one meter. Um, so no. that's a, another reason that I'm giving that we can right. take those Thank barriers out. Thank you, Joanna. Right, can I go through the list of members again? Uh, how they're going to vote, uh, Councillor? <laughs> sorry, to, sorry to interrupt, Chair, but that, that proposed amendment needs to be seconded. It's not yet been seconded. Is somebody going to second that? I would uh, love to second it. to second. Yeah. OK, right. Councillor Assad, uh, can you, are you going to uh, abstain again or do you want to vote? Or? No, I'm going to abstain again on this one. Thank you. Right. Councillor Hinckley. I would like to vote to remove them. OK, Councillor Jogia. Yeah. I'm in support of uh, the motion. Councillor Lee. James. I can't hear you. Since I haven't heard any representation on these two schemes um, directly, I will have to abstain on this on this point. Right. Uh, so, and Joan, you're obviously in favour. Right. <laughs> uh, yes. uh, Councillor Perry. Um, based on my previous comments, I'm, I will be supporting the, uh, the motion. All right then. Well, again, I, I won't support it because I, I believe there is a, a, uh, a review process that we should go through, but obviously uh, the majority again is in favour of removing those, so we're going to remove PS10 and PS11. Right, right, OK, can I move on? Uh, David, do you, want, do you want to speak now? Yeah, if I can, yeah. Um, I, I, just want to, I just want to give some context before some of my specific comments, really, and I'm actually really, really disappointed 
today because um, I feel this panel has been put in a very difficult position. That's just been evident with the last five minutes with regards to um, schemes coming forward and um, having impact on businesses. This panel has, ever since I can remember, wants to support and promote walking, cycling, less car usage, supporting businesses, supporting the community, residents, improvement of highway. And although we've heard, heard some articulate comments tonight from our advisors, who are incredibly professional, incredibly passionate, um, as decision makers and councillors, we have to consider all of the consequences of any scheme which is introduced. Um, and if if our consideration was to just get everybody cycling, you might we could just shut all the roads and create cycle lanes, but we've got schools, community schools, residents, um, and everything else in between businesses to consider and represent views. So what I am slightly disappointed about is how we've gone about this um, because I don't see any way forward other than chair if I'm honest is there's a lot of schemes out there that have been supported and haven't been raised tonight by way of contention or through the excellent consultation which has um, happened from officers with all ward councillors some of those schemes are supported some are not and I think us as a panel to make the best of a very bad situation is to put forward and promote the schemes which are supported and where there is contention I think we need to do more work I think we keep being told that we're down to, we're down to critical deadlines um, I understand that but there is opportunities through officers negotiation with the, the, the funders and if that fails um, to get some of these schemes right maybe on a cross-party basis the two leaders of each group make political representations in order to still draw down funding and implement schemes, albeit from an amended basis. Um, I do think if I can speak just very briefly is um, we have had comments already tonight around residents don't understand what schemes it is and people don't know what they're doing or whatever the wording was. I've always found that residents are experts in their areas and you know, just the first two deputations around Green Lane and Dennis Lane, for example, um, very articulate arguments put forward. They're experts in their roads and sometimes I think it's difficult as, as decision makers to ignore that. Um, but some of the schemes I've got concern around with regards to Princess Drive, uh, for example, we, all, we want to ban a right turn there. We're about to ban a right turn into Pin of View the goodwill to all junction, the officers want to ban all the right turns there. So if you're coming from North Harrow to get to somewhere near the Civic Centre, for example, you're going to be you're going to just be increasing more mileage and mileage and mileage in your in your uh, in your row, in your journey. I don't feel on some of these schemes we've had enough data around highway impact. Uh, consultation has been inadequate um, and so I'd I, I, I'm very concerned um, as with some of these schemes. Byron Road again, I've, I've, I've made my concerns known to officers privately um, and, and again don't feel the document which was circulated cap accurately captured um, the discussion in my ward meeting personally. Um, and I, we're just in a situation because and we've been put in this situation and so not to add my comments in Princess Drive and Byron Road. I've also got concerns on Pin of View. Again, a very articulate um, a deputation put forward. My own communications with ward councillors um, is exactly what was said. It's 50 50. There's not a big majority in favour, not against concerns there. And we're putting in schemes which are having major impacts. And just because the money's offered up doesn't necessarily we always have to take it. And so, Chair, by way of um, trying to be productive in this discussion, is where we've got contention. Um, they're having major impacts. Do we want to put something in just to take it out after four weeks, eight weeks? And so, I don't know how you're going to capture everybody's different comments. I'm not going to put forward any particular motions. I'll leave that to you. But um, 
knowing the officers and the people involved in where we are to got to where we are they're incredibly professional and passionate about promoting their schemes as are all the members on this panel to finish about passionate about representing their residents and informed decision making has always been an important part of of a council and i just think on some of these schemes where there's wider impact we're not as informed as i would like to be so um I've tried to be supportive where possible, challenge where possible, and be constructive in helping you get to a ruling chair. Okay, all right. Uh, but um, can I confirm that you're you're not really happy with uh, Byron Road or Princess Princess Drive? Is that is that right, David? That that's correct. And okay. although I've done it in brief, in our informal excellent discussions with officers gave multiple details as to why I was concerned and the impact of implementing all those big three schemes in Marlborough all at the same time. Okay. Um, this go supporting Marlborough School and the, and there's riot walking and riding around there and that temporary closure during the uh, beginning and end of the day which I think is a really fantastic opportunity to, to show residents that we're doing that. Right okay. Um, can I just ask the other members who haven't spoken, uh, John or Ami, do you want to comment on the schemes that are still left at all? Um, yes, I, I um, agree with um, Councillor Perry's uh, rationale um, um, about the logic behind it. As, you know, it's not, not the way we usually work in TASAP. Um, mm. But in terms of schemes, um, I know other councillors will come in, but the other issues we'd like to uh, Vote against for removal. LTN 04, 05, uh, and 08, please. And for uh, whilst we're on the LTNL schemes. All right. Um, uh, well, I'm going to come back to those because I think that some are, I will uh, re refer to when I sum up. Yeah. Is, is that okay? Right. Uh, John, yeah. have, you, have you got any other comments? No, at all? no, no. I think it's all been said. Oh, God. <laughs> right, uh, Pamana, do you want to say anything at all? Or? No, I just want to say that, um, you know, ward uh, councillors should be fully um, uh, involved in any decisions that are made on any of these schemes um, with proper consultations right. with residents. That's the only thing I'd like to like to add. All right, right OK. Right, um, so can we move to the, some recommendations? I'll, I'll, I'll deal with the screen. Uh, Chairman, I think um, Anoop Shah has raised his hand to speak. Oh, I can't see him from here, but OK. Uh, Anoop again. Uh, thank you. Just a, a brief comment about um, consideration of trialling schemes. So if the, if the trial is for too short a period, then there won't be enough time to see the, the benefits of a low traffic neighbourhood in terms of the modal shift. So there really need to be six month schemes as uh, as recommended and, and we, we would uh, recommend that there's traffic monitoring, um, including roads around the site so that you can then you can then show that traffic hasn't increased on those roads. Thank you. Right, OK, thanks. OK. Uh, if no one else wants to speak, I'll move it to the recommendations. Uh, can, can I just say a few words to start with? Um, in moving the recommendations, I listen very carefully to the ward, ward members uh, and members and advisors at TASA and the deputations. I've also read through the comments on the Harrow Street Spaces portal. I've noted the emails and calls I've got uh, on the uh, various schemes. I'm also aware this is a government backed scheme to address COVID-19. Uh, we now have no other funding for local Im implementation plans. Uh, and I've borne in mind the work we have done locally and regionally in, on improving walking, cycling and healthy streets. Um, yes, yeah, well, I've done that. Right. OK. Right, so um, can I move to the recommendations as set out on the agenda? Uh, I think we have 
can note uh, item one. Uh, item two are the p pedestrian space schemes. Now, I think we have already removed a number of these uh, from from the schemes to be put forward. Um, uh, can I suggest that the other ones are agreed? And just to remind people, we have a review on a monthly basis. So any ones of these that are have been uh, installed, most of them have been in uh, installed for at least six weeks, some in a couple of months. So any ones uh, that are issues with, they can be reviewed quite quickly. Okay. Sorry, Chair, for the purposes of the minutes, can you go through each of the recommendations and identify the schemes that are not being supported? So one has been agreed. In two, can you identify, can you please identify the schemes? Thank you. Right, okay. <laughs> I'll get paid for this. Right, okay, we're on pedestrian space, yeah? So we are agreeing PSO1. PSO2, uh, as P PSO7 has been withdrawn, is that right? Yeah. Yes. PSO8 has been withdrawn. Yes. Yes. Uh, we agree with PSO9 because that's in South Harrow. Yay. Uh, PS10, that's been withdrawn. Yes. Yes. And PS11 has been withdrawn. Yes. We're still progressing, going ahead with PS12 and PS13. Yes? Yes. Right. Uh, OK. Um, right. The low traffic neighbourhood schemes. Um, I would like to put forward that we don't uh, 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 agree with PSO5 Green Lanes, PSO7 Byron Road, PSO8 Dennis Lane, and uh, sorry, LTN, these are, so I'll say those again, LTN05 Green Lane Stanmore, LTN07 Byron Road Area Wheelstone, LTN 08 Dennis Lane area Stanmore and LTN 09 Prince's Drive area Willstone. Um, so, uh, Chair, like Chair, LTN 02 Pin of View. Remember that was subject to ward councillors. They had a few things they needed to be satisfied with as well. So I think we just caveat 02 as oh, well. So it was the LTN, back bench with supporting the back bench. Who was just Council Brown, yeah. I believe. LTN 02 will progress, but there's certain issues that need to be addressed yeah. as well. We agree with LTN 03, Francis Road area, Greenhill. LTN 04, Fulham Road, West Harrow. Uh, uh, LTN 06, Southfield Park area, North Harrow. And uh, I think that's it, actually. Yeah. Right. So, sorry to interrupt, Chairman. What? Is it, sorry right? to interrupt, yes. but I've, I've had a lot of representation for LTN04. Um, well, the Warren Road think, area I is. I think is, the Wall Council is quite happy with that, Anjana. I'm so I am really surprised that the Wall Councillors are happy with the scheme um, because the representation that I've had is overwhelming. Um, so can you just record it, please, that I actually uh, am recommending it not to be uh, implemented because um, I've had lots of and I actually know the area very well. We are only going to have more pollution and uh, uh, we are going to actually push more traffic onto the other roads and that's what we are doing. So uh, this is just not practical. If you if you if you if you're living there, this is not practical is all I would like to say to you. Right. OK, well, uh, again, just take that one to the vote, Chair. Just zero four, just take it to the vote if we have to. So, so Chairman, can I read what I think you're putting forward as an amendment? So, recommendation three to stand as to approve the low traffic neighbourhood schemes um, shown in Appendix A, Table 2, LTN 03, LTN 04, LTN 06, 
and LTN 02 subject to consultation yes. with board councillors. Yes. yes, yes. For yes. implementation on an experimental basis by the end of September 2020. Yes, yeah. Right, is that okay with that one? Okay. Uh, school streets. Uh, 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 again, I, I think I'm pulled putting forward all, all those. Uh, I think as far as I'm aware, uh, head gen councillors are not on so, 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 Sorry, and, sorry, Chairman. Are, are you we proposed the you've proposed the amendment. Are you actually going to have it seconded and then vote on it now or are you going to go through all the changes and then take them together? Well, I'm just putting this one long recommendation at the moment. Oh, so, OK. Sorry, it's just that it might it might be easier to take the recommendations one at a time. Yes, please. Um, because well, I disagree with is. taking it in. Sorry, Chairman, to interrupt. I'm so sorry. But we need to take um, the uh, LTN of four out of it if you're going to do it in in all together, please. Okay, so. Uh, so I, I've done pedestrian space. We're all happy with that one, yeah? Yes. All right, so I, I'll go through LTN low traffic neighborhoods one by one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. LTN 02, I think we, we've agreed that that's pin of view area. LTN 03, Francis Road area, Green Hill, we've agreed. Uh, LTN04, Fawn Road Area, West Harrow. I think we could agree that unless you want to vote on that, but as I said, the all councillors are in favour. We favor would like to. We would like to vote on that, please. Right. Okay. <clears throat> right. Let's go through that again. Then, Councillor Asad. For. For what? The the low traffic neighborhood scheme so you've split so you're splitting up the recommendations into separate ones for each scheme is that right so you've yeah. taken agreement as i've recorded it for um approval of the low traffic neighborhood scheme ltn 03 ltn 02 subject to ward councillor consultation so yeah. everyone's agreed on those two yeah. you're yeah. now on you're now on the recommendation to approve the low traffic neighbourhood scheme LTN 04, which you want put to a vote. Right. Correct. So it's, it's which, yes. Correct. Yes, and I'm for. I vote for it. You vote for it for staying in the scheme, yes? Yes, yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, Councillor Hinckley. I would like to vote against it. All right. Councillor Joggia. Against, please. Right. Councillor yeah. Lee. Councillor Lee. Mistake in the scheme. Sorry. How are you voting, James? Yeah, voting in favour of it being kept in. All right, OK. Oh. Councillor Patel. Oh, uh, you're on, against. Oh, I don't want you're it against. to stay in the scheme. All right, Councillor Patel. I'm Perry. against, yes. I'm voting in favour of keeping the scheme in the. I vote in favour, so I think the majority are in. So the majority are in favour of that. So it's nice, nice to win one vote tonight, I suppose. <laughs> and then you've just got to do um, to approve LTN 06. Yes. And that's taken and as approved. South Southfield Park uh, areas, North Harrow. OK, and all the rest have been withdrawn. Yeah. So that, that's mm. approved. Yes. Yes, so, so five, seven, eight and nine are removed. Am I correct? OK, yeah. Yes. Okay. Thanks. OK, so oh. then moving on to recommendation four. Which is the school, uh, school street schemes on recommending that we uh, uh, agree though those schemes tonight that's sso1 sso2 sso3 sso4 is it, is that agreed by everybody i agree 
Green, green, green. Smash it, um. What? Sorry? Do you That's want a recorded vote? Can you go through all the members? Well, on, on, what, on the school street? Or? Yeah, on, on each scheme, Councillor Joggio wants to, wants a recorded vote. Do you, do you want, you just want it on all the schemes, but what a recorded vote, is that correct? Yes, please. Okay, so can you just go through all the recorded members? Right. So we're deciding whether to vote for or against the school street schemes, yes? Yes. Okay. So yeah. Deciding to approve the schemes. All right. Councillor. To recommend approval. Councillor Assad. Um, I'm for the schemes. Right. Councillor Hinkley. I'm for the schemes. Councillor Jogia. For the schemes, please. Why are we doing this? Just so it's recorded in the minutes appropriately. All right. Councillor Lee. Uh, for the scheme. Councillor Patel. I am for the scheme subject to some of the comments made by the board councillors wherever appropriate. Councillor Perry. In favour of right. the scheme. And I'm in favour of the scheme as well. So we will all agreed on the school streets stuff. And the last one. Is, so then you've uh, got recommendation five, which is, is to note the cycling schemes implemented. There's a separate recommendation for George V. So this yeah. is about the three that have already been implemented. Right, OK, yeah, there's one. Yeah, so there's SO1, SCO1, SCO3, SCO9. Yeah. Um, right. What do you want, uh, Amit, do you want another? So this is a tricky one because we're, we're not in favour of it, and especially given we've had representations of Uxbridge Road, but it's already done. So I think we'd like to uh, have minuted our our opposition to SC1 uh, and 9 in particular, please. All right, OK. I mean, they will, will be re 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 reviewed, although I think they were installed last yeah. month, but uh, they will be reviewed. Yeah, um, so I... I just want to say on the SEO one, it's just a comment if we can look at um, 20 mile per hour zone on the sides, the slip roads and yeah. making the junction safer. Just a comment. Uh, OK, right. Right, uh, OK, so if we can agree those then. Uh, uh, let's see. Sorry, sorry, sorry Councillor, it's Dax Galani here. Can you go through recommendation five? Uh, step by step in terms of what schemes you were doing because I'm not clear on it. Thank you. Well, I've just done that, Daksha. So are you putting the whole of the recommendation to note the cycling schemes implemented as shown in Appendix A, Table 4 as yeah. one or do you want it split up into the separate schemes? Well, my understanding is that people uh, uh, agree them agree all the ones that are still there. There's SO1, SO3 and SO9. So is that agreed by everyone? I certainly hope so. Yeah. Right, great, smash it. Yeah. OK. OK, so um, recommendation six is as amended. Well, the George of Fifth. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, has that been agreed? Yes. Um, could I please no, request? Can, can I so we wanted to change the wording uh, to ensure a re, um, that a re, we require a change in the scheme to deal with the concerns with the parking for the school, if that could be incorporated. Well, it, it is part part of the things the officers are going to look at, I mean, yeah. But if we if we can just have that um, sort of minuted that it, you know, it will require a change. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so, so we've got the wording which doesn't include that. We can have it minuted your comment that you'd like the officers to particularly consider the parking considerations, yeah. but at the moment it's not being put forward as an amendment to the recommendation. Can I put it forward as an amendment? As a well, I'd need some clear wording on it. Um, to change um, so I don't um, that the George the Fifth Avenue cycle scheme requires the scheme to deal with the concerns with parking in relation to Noah Hill High School. 
Second that. Yeah. So sorry, you're asking that the, you're only approving the scheme subject to it dealing with the issues of parking for the school. I just think we need to be really clear what the wording is for Daksha. So I don't know if you want to just take a couple of minutes to type something into the chat so that everyone's clear on what's being put forward as the motion, then we need someone to second it. Yeah, let me just put something on there. It might be better by email. Just one second. Also, also, Sarah, could you read the whole thing out uh, again? Yeah. It's a bit inclusive of the amendments. Thank I'm you. Gonna, I'm going to see if I can put the whole recommendation in yeah, the chat. Hold on, I'm just waiting to get my emails up. If either Elaine or Daksha, if you can access the draw, oh, hold on, I can get it now. Mm. Sorry, I'm typing. Yeah, that's OK. I'm, I'm trying to put the whole wording in the chat, and, but it's not working at the moment. Sarah, just read it out so I can amend my Sarah, word. Thank Sarah, you. Sarah, just put it in the chat if that will help. Sarah? Sorry, you, you are going to. I'm trying to. It's just I, it's just it. frozen everything. It, it's already in the chat, members. Is it? OK. OK. Is it? So hold on, I need to go back and just read it. So everything's just stopped now. Sorry, I don't see anything in the chat. Right, OK, so it's come up now. Oh, I, right. So let me see. Uh, let me send this. Can people see that? Yes, I can see it now. Thank you. Right, so that was the, the proposed, right, we've got it twice because obviously Elaine and I are doing things at the same time. <laughs> and um, OK, so. Sorry, you... Sarah, it's Daksha here. Is this revised Appendix A we're talking about? Yes. In all cases, thank you. In all cases, it's revised Appendix A just to deal with the fact that Kings Hill was removed. Um, so we've got the word in now in the chat. So, Councillor Jovia, you are going to propose an amendment to that amendment. Yeah, so I'm just reading through it now. So, to approve the George. So, uh, subject to officers. Yeah, what, what I just wanted to make clear that the impact on parking pressures is uh, and the concerns of the school is incorporated and I just wanted to Joey, such the way that it's it's incorporated. Joey, can I try and be helpful and make a suggestion to the wording? Is that OK? Yeah. I mean, I think it's subject to the officers changing the scheme to reduce the length of the scheme to avoid continuing past Noah Hill. I think the concern is we don't think it should go ahead if you can't address the parking problems. And I think that's the, the concern that our group has on, on this issue, that we don't want to approve it if the parking isn't resolved. However, if the parking is resolved, then we're relaxed about it going ahead. So do you want to hear from the officers on on 
the consequences of agreeing? Well, I mean, the consequence presumably is it TFL either will or will not sign off on it. But I don't think we should. I mean, it's obviously up to the committee, but I don't think we should agree a scheme that creates a massive problem for school opening in September. So does the panel want to hear advice from the officers first, or do you just want to hear from the officers? Yeah, Yeah, I'd like to hear from the officers, please. Uh, Thank you, Chair. Okay, um, I've read the recommendation. I actually think it's a very good recommendation. It does exactly what you want it to do. It either stops the scheme from going outside the school or suggests Putting the uh, the circle lane off the ha- off the carriageway. Either way, you're keeping the parking, so um, it does what you want it to do, in my opinion. Thank you, sir. Right. Is that okay? Yes. Right. Are you, uh, are you all right with that? I, mean, I think. I think it's, is, yeah. I think the problem is looking at the wording. If officers conduct a review, and bear in mind officers had some time to conduct. A review and to come up with alternative suggestions. If they can't review and say it's not possible, then class that will still have approved the scheme, albeit with the flaws still in it. That's, I think, our concern why we just want to strengthen the wording a bit. Okay, so. Have you got some wording for the, for the amendment? So. Um, yeah, I'm just copying and pasting and trying to. Because we're quite near the end of the meeting now. I mean, all you need to do is take out the first conduct, so it basically says um, to approve the George V Avenue Cycle Scheme for implementation as shown in Appendix A Table 4 on an experimental basis by September 2020, subject to officers amending the scheme to reduce the length of scheme to avoid it continuing past Noah Hill School or to incorporate a dedicated cycle lane without the need to utilise the lane of either side of the road. And the next, and then just stop there because obviously it's going to go to the leader anyway. So to leak such a review can be fed back to the leader. Yeah. Okay. Hope that helps. Yeah. That's that sounds. Is that agreeable to everybody? Yes. You think yes. I've, yeah. 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 Yes. Right. Yes. Right. So, yeah. Daksha, have you got a note of what that amendment was? No, I haven't, so I would be grateful if someone could email it to me or put it on the chat, please. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll email it to you, but I mean, also don't forget this is recorded, so you know, we can just play that back. Right. I'm sure you'll all want to watch this meeting tomorrow as well as today. <laughs> yeah. Councillor Osborne, please email it to me. Thank you. Sure, no problem. I'll do it now. Right, OK. Um, watch this meeting day after day. Right. um, Okay, so that's that's recommendation. Yeah, and we can just we can just sorry, we can can just note seven, eight and nine, I think, can't we? Yes, yeah, so seven, eight and nine are you going to take together? Well, yeah, I mean, it's not actually about it's not about a recommendation. It's just noting that about what we have to do if something, uh, you know, about the. Uh, well, I think I think they are all proposed decisions, so they they all need to be um, agreed by members. It's just whether to take them all three together or go one by one. Right. Oh, one by one. Okay. okay. So recommendation seven. Sorry, can you make it clear what recommend? I, I'm a bit lost now. Do you want me to read it, Chairman? Yeah. If it, if it's so, not too- so recommendation seven is to pr- approve the making of experimental traffic orders where required to implement the necessary traffic and parking restrictions for the schemes for a minimum of six months. So that's basically linked to all the ones you've said, yes, you're happy that they should go ahead. 
this just gives authority to make the necessary orders. Yes. Yeah. Is, is that OK? With yes. Right, right. OK, so that's agreed. Recommendation eight to delegate authority to the corporate director community following consultation with the portfolio holder for environment to undertake a regular review of the schemes and to provide a monthly update to members of TARSAP and to determine whether any amendments are required for schemes, including ending any experimental schemes. Yes. Um, is there anything about ward councillors in that recommendation? Can we add ward councillors in there, please? Because it just says members of TARSAP. So you're proposing after to provide a monthly update to members of TARSAP that you add and ward councillors? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Can that be seconded? Uh, yeah. Yeah, second that. I'll yeah. second that. Can we? I, I, I'm quite okay. happy. Okay. Uh, so put uh, that. Uh, Can I just? And John. No, I, I just wanted to ask, have we actually done um, LTN 05, LTN 08? Did we vote on that? Well, well, they yeah. were basically taken out of the ones that were being put forward for approval. Yes, um, I, I, I so actually, by default they've, they've dropped off the list. I, I actually suggested because okay. all councillors were happy, uh, Green Lanes, Dennis Lane, Byron Road and Pincers Drive area. So the, they've all been taken thank out. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, so is, is thank you. recommendation thank you, A with that amendment agreed? Yeah. And, agreed. Uh, right. OK. Um, OK. And then you've re just got recommendation, recommendation nine. Nine, which is? to bring a report back to TARSAP following the initial six months of operation of schemes, to feedback the results of consultation and the equality impact assessments, and to consider whether schemes should be ended, extended up to a maximum of 18 months or made permanent. Right. Agreed. Is that agreed? Right. Uh, I think six months is a very long time for some of these schemes. Well, there is a, a monthly review in any case, but uh, we have the six months. Yeah, there, I, th I think there's the monthly review, but the six months is the required period of consultation for an experimental order. So you can't formally consider it until the end of the consultation period. Right. Uh, I think that's about the end of the meeting. Uh, although the Gillian team doesn't come in for another 45 minutes, so we've, we've got quite a bit of spare time still. Right. No, thank you, Jerry. And <laughs> well, we've only been here for three and a quarter hours, so can I thank the members very, very much for all their contributions and their comments and questions tonight. Very grateful for that. Uh, thank you for being at this virtual TARSAT meeting. Um, and I think I'll close the meeting at 21 oh, 13 I think it is right thanks thank very you. much I would just well, like to say everyone. one thank thing you thank you very much chairman it has been a pleasure yeah, well done, to be yeah. on this committee thank <laughs> you chair yeah.